all possible to have more yoga in our lives, I have a special edition yoga journeys with Shamir Sidhu. I meet the mics. I meet the mics. Let's hear some noise. Come on. Where's the noise? I've got one of those horns. Mm, mm, mm. I've got one of those. Woo. Yeah. I should have got a horn. That's the horn noise. So welcome. <laughs> Good evening to Shamir. Founder and CEO of More Yoga. Humble CEO. Sorry, yeah, humble CEO. Welcome. Good evening. How you doing? I'm great, actually. Yeah, good. Good. Glad to be here. That is a really beautiful Christmas tree and fire behind you. Thank you. Yeah, the fire is real. The Christmas tree is fake. <laughs> And so the evening begins. Okay, so I have set questions. So if this is your first yoga journeys, normally I have teachers of color and I ask them the same set questions. But obviously with our CEO tonight, I've changed the questions just a little bit, but the base is still mm -hmm. there. So it's all about sharing the journey, sharing the story and understanding, um, you know, what that journey looks like. I take questions at the end. I work through my questions first. So hold your questions till the end. So kicking off, first question, Shamir. Honouring our ancestors, tell us your family lineage. Okay, good, good, question, good question to start with. Um, so both my uh, mum and dad come from Indian lineage, um, but they were both born in East Africa, both in Kenya. Okay. And yeah, and um, uh, my parents were the second generation born Kenyan. So my grandma was born in Kenya as well. Um, and then my great grandma was was born in India. Uh, they were brought over part of the Brit British Empire to work on the railways in Kenya. And okay. yeah, they lived there in Nairobi and uh, uh, Mombasa. And they, they were there for, you know, close to 50 to 60 years. That's not the, the family, not my parents, because they, right. they, were, they were only there for about uh, 15 years before, before they left. But huh. um, so my parents, um, my mum is Gujarati. So she's from the Gujarat, which is northwest India. My dad's Punjabi. Mm -hmm. And that's from the northwest of India. And uh, so my dad's Sikh and my mum's Ismaili Muslim, which follows the Islamic lineage that leads down to the Aga Khan, who's like um, a living Imam, who's a descendant of Prophet Muhammad. Okay. Um, so that's my mum's side. My dad's side is Sikh side. Mm -hmm. And they, they both met together uh, on a train uh, going from Kenya to Uganda. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's that's how they met. Um, so um, yeah, so my family were living in Kenya, and I suppose the Indians were they were looked upon by the British as like more administ administrators. It was mm -hmm. to say, you know, they use they've they've had that relationship with the Indians for a long time. I yeah. think if you look if you look at the cabinet now, I think it's just a, it's just an extension of that with like Pretty Patel and Rishi Sunak. That's mm. just a, con a continuation of that of that relationship. That's all, that's, that's a, as far as I see it. Um, I think there was uh, an uprising, not an uprising. There was um, a change in uh, um, administration and on how things were administered after Kenya gained independence. Um, it was President Kenyatta, I think, who, who took over, mm -hmm. and there was there was a lot of power shift away from the Asian Africans, uh, Indian Asian Africans in Kenya, uh, that led to a lot of um, the you know the the Asian Indian Africans um, to to move. I think it was. Basically, Kenyatta said everyone who's there has to apply for it when they got citizen, when they got independence, had to apply for uh, Kenyan citizenship. And a lot of mm. the Indians, a lot of the Indians didn't do that. They kept mm. there because they had they had they were British subjects so they had British passports. So they didn't, right. want, they didn't want to lose that. So there was a lot of unrest and it became quite unfavorable to be in Kenya at that time. So my parents and I think I don't know, I'm not sure how many of them moved to Uganda. Okay. Yeah, which is 
you know, it's it's interior, only one country to the west, and they set up a a, a market. You know, they, they're uh, um, quite business orientated. The community in East Africa, mm -hmm. um, an outpost there in East Uganda, East Uganda, and I think they, I think went elsewhere in Uganda. As far as I know, all my family were in a place called. Mabale, which is MBLA, mm -hmm. I think it might be, yeah, MBLA. Mm -hmm. And um, they were there and they were running good, really good business, had a really good life. And, you know, they were living a prosperous life. And there was a, the, the leader at that time was Idi Amin, he's quite famous as being a, mm. one, of, one of the, uh, one of the up there uh, despots uh, in the, in the, as league tables go. Uh, and my parents were, um, basically subject to being uh, yeah, basically kicked out of the country. Mm. Basically, all the Asian Africans were asked to leave. Uh, Indian Moon seemed to believe that they were, um, you know, a detriment to the country's uh, prosperity and therefore they all had to leave, uh, some uh, willingly and some forcibly. And there was a lot, I think there was quite a few deaths in there was this in the 60s you mean well this was this was 69 my parents came over mm -hmm. yeah so this is late 60s my yeah. parents came over in the late 60s and they came over with uh loads of my lots of my uncles and aunts. so what, what happened was they basically uh, had the option being british subjects to uh, go elsewhere within the commonwealth mm -hmm. um, i think there was there was a there was a path back to Kenya. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the facts on that, but I think I know people did go back to Kenya. There are there are still lots of Asian Africans in Kenya. Um, but they they moved on with my grandma and my granddad and my great grandma and lots of my great aunts, great uncles, and my you know my mum's brothers and sisters. You know, there's a, there's a lot of them. I don't, mm -hmm. know how, don't know how many they were, but there was like you know busloads, mm -hmm. and and they came to came to London, came to the UK. Yeah, they came to the UK, UK, they came to London. My first house was, uh, I was born in Enfield Chase Hospital, so I'm a Londoner. Chase Farm. North, North yeah. Chase Farm, yeah, you know it? I know it, I used to live near there. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 so I was born in Chase Farm Hospital, a little bit sad, sad to hear that they've closed their A&E. Uh, um, &E. It's not, uh, yeah, they just turned it into like a community hospital now. There's no yeah. more births, no more births happening there. Um, yeah, so they, they moved to the UK in the 70s, or it was 1969, and they stayed for a couple of years. Uh, my, my extended family, my grandma, my granddad, uh, aunts and uncles, etc. And then I think they, you know, I, I can't remember the full story, you know, my, my, I probably need a refresher, but a lot of them then moved on to Canada. There was mm -hmm. options to go on to Canada. There was labour shortages. They were looking for skilled labour. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and they, you know, th there was visas being offered. So loads of my family moved to um, to uh, Vancouver. I think a couple moved to, to Toronto, but most of them moved to Vancouver on the west coast, um, including my mum's uh, parents. And my mm -hmm. mum, my mum and dad stayed behind with two of my uncles, which is, and my parents were really young. They were like. 17 18 between mm -hmm. like 18 18 and 20 and, and mm -hmm. uh, i can see the i can see the attraction you know 60s early 70s they come to a new new uh you know hip and trendy London. place yeah, yeah you know the Be the beagles are around there's mini skirts it's all like fashionable uh you know you can think what you want you can do what you want the opportunities are are you know are, are quite accommodating but you know for whatever reasons a lot of the family wanted to move on to vancouver which afforded the same sort of like polit political and cultural environment. Uh, but for whatever reasons, my mum my and dad and two of my uncles decided to stay, which is a really weird concept for me to think that if I was 18 and my parents were leaving to another country, would I go with them? No, actually, I'd, <laughs> I'd say, see you later. But the thing is, the thing is, I'd been, I've been living in this country my whole life, so I've had a cultural... I'm culturally British mm, uh, and, mm. and I grew up for a lot of generations where I understand like the intrinsic natures of different aspects of the business, whether it's political, mu musically or, mm. or, 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 or whatever it is. Whereas me and my family have been there and they've been there for like, you know, less than two years and they're like, no, nah, here's better than anywhere you're going. So I'm staying. Okay. Mm. So 
my parents stayed. They were living in uh, uh, Bounds Green, and that's um, North London boy. Y- yeah, North London. And then when I was two years old, moved to Crouch Hill, okay. um, just between Finsbury Park and Crouch End. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lived there ever since. Um, I lived there till yeah, until my my mid twenties, where then I f- flew the roost, left the nest. Uh, I lied. I was I was I was living there since my mid thirties, <laughs> my my early thirties. Sounds sad, doesn't it? But you know, I love the honesty. I love it. I love I'm, I'm a you know I'm a I'm a economic prag- pragmatist. Absolutely. You know, I don't. You were saving. I don't, you, were saving. you know. This is the way I am, you know. My, there's a room there. My parents, my, my parents lived there. Um, it was very comfortable. But um, then um, I suppose um, met my wife, and we uh, got a place together. We moved out, and I, I had moved out numerous times before that. You know, I had from my early twenties. I went to university and stayed stayed in halls of residence and I had other places where we were sharing with friends and stuff like that but you know in between in between there was always a room for me to come back to it's not like I was at my parents from zero zero to 32 years old I believe you (laughs) that is wonderful that is honestly that's a very beautiful family story you shared there thank you Got some real insight. I, into you now. I can I can go on. I mean, let me see how many people we got. We got twenty two people. Is it going up or down? I can make it go down if you want. No, it's going up. Don't worry, it's going up. It's going up every time. Okay, I'm gonna move on now. We're gonna start getting down into nitty gritty. So, okay, where, when, and with whom was your first yoga class? That's a great question. Um, do you want the do you want the, the real story? <laughs> no, no, I'm, just, real story. I'm, I'm just like, look, story. I think, I think up front, and I think this is something it took me a while to, to be, to get, get a grips with was actually, you know, coming clean with yoga teachers in the yoga community. And, and I, and I've, I think it was before you joined on with us, uh, Yvonne, at, at um, it was a celebration we're having in Tulse Hill, where I basically, I was, talking to like 50 or 60 yoga teachers and I said look I've got to come clean I've been telling ex people here and there in the limited times where I'm actually talking to yoga teachers uh-huh. there. you know I'm saying oh this is my I'm always telling them another teacher that I see in the studio they'll never go to or a teacher they'll never <laughs> see but it was sort of that point where it was like I was feeling like a bit of a fraud that you know why is this guy in charge of yoga studios and he's actually he's not actually practicing yoga and and actually it took me a long time for, for that, for me to actually uh, realise the actual credibility for me to be in this scene was the fact that I'm from a, and I, I don't know, I'm, I'm surprised it took me so long for that penny to drop. I'm actually from a health and, health and fitness background. I mean, I did 10 years as a personal trainer. So Absolutely, we're coming on to that. Yeah, yeah, we're coming on to that. It's, so, I mean, you know, that's just part of the story. It's like, it's not, it's, uh, um, you know, it wasn't a far leap. So, mm. you know, I should have never had to felt an imposition for me to be in the yoga sphere, considering I, I'm from the health and fitness, fitness environment, which, which deals with mental health, well-being, and Absolutely. physical, and, but less less spiritual. So I came clean at a meeting, a meeting, you know, I was doing a speech or whatever, and and it was it was liberating. It Good. was liberating. So my my actual yeah exactly. So my 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 actual um, experience. Uh, f- original experience of yoga was at a YMCA and it was in Crouch okay. and I did yoga at YMCA and it was I was getting to do a down dog and I remember from a very early stage with very very tight calves and uh, she was getting me to do some like some drills against the wall for block and it was mm-hmm. you know, that, that was that was my first experience I mean it was it definitely didn't get me into yoga and and uh, how long ago was this this was ages ago I'm talking like yeah, I'm, 40, I'm 42 years old now, so this is over 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. So quite a while ago then. Okay. But you never maintained the practice. Uh, okay. So go back to what I said about being a fraud and who I am, whether or not I'm into yoga or not. I'm, I'm not a yogi by mm-hmm. any shape or, or imagination that I'm a yogi. Um, I am somebody who believes in health and wellness and believe mm-hmm. in some people who believes in 
um, mental health and and um, you know the energy of people and believe in that I believe in that energy of people and uh, and community and connections mm, and and created yeah. Yeah, and, and and for me, everything I've always done is a manifestation of my personality, which is which is born out of what I just said is the community and the energy that that people are giving and understanding what people can give and mm. and and utilizing the, the the skills of people who who can use my skills as well. It's never a one way street. I'm a I'm always a giver mm-hmm. uh, to to find out what what we can do to to make things better you know mm-hmm. it, it, whether it's um organizing a night out whether it's uh, organizing a football team whether it's uh, organizing uh, wh- where you know whatever it is it's my energy it's I'm going in and i'm finding people in and I'm bringing mm-hmm. people in work and then when i'm w- working with people you know i'm working out how they work you know are they someone that needs to be yeah, arm around the shoulder or is it someone you can talk directly to you know how does it work mm-hmm. so yeah, that's that's my personality, and that's um, you know that's why I've been able to see into this world of yoga mm-hmm. and how how we can grow it, and um, and you know back to the question about my yoga experience, it's like um, this is this is for me. It is a yogic journey. It's just a very long around the houses journey, and I've done it. And it, 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 it is and I realized that yoga mm-hmm. will be my calling and it will once mm-hmm. I found that headspace for me of to be able to spend more time and it, and it is there I just need to be able to be be stronger will to where I put my time um but I love that I, I, I love yeah that. I, and the fact that you shared that so thank you and I, and I don't know how many people are following my Instagram. It's not really that much happening on it, but my, my Instagram title is Mr. Yoga in the Making. And it, the whole thing is about following my journey from where I am now mm-hmm. to, become, to becoming a, a yogi. And the end of it, it says, spoiler alert, it's going to be a long time. This may be <laughs> a long time. But it's something that, you know, you know practicing breathing and, and um, having the, um, you know, the ambition to have a yoga practice and and taking up people's people's offers yeah, i'll get a lot of offers from my from the yoga teachers I haven't had one from you yet everyone uh, to, to, <laughs> to say to say you know they say you know let me do a one-to-one for you or let me come to come to my yoga class etc you know it's it's we all know it's not just a physical practice so no, without without yeah. with, 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 you're without doubt that union you're creating yes. that yes. 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 Yeah. All coming yeah. together. so it hasn't yeah. just got to be that physical practice so well yeah. done for sharing i totally totally respect that you rightly touched on the fact that you're already in the industry you know you were in the wellness industry you're a personal trainer so tell us all about how you became a personal trainer and how you founded more fit yep more fit so um Basically, back to my characteristics. So I just touched upon it about how I, you know, how I organise people, and I'm quite a good, a good uh, delegator. And um, I had a girl, I had a had a girlfriend um, years back. We were together for a number of years, and she just thought I'd be a really good personal trainer. And she goes, "Look, at, at that time, I was sort of in between travelling. I'd done a couple of years abroad, travelling the world, and." Not 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 two years um, running at the same time, but it, it's this mm-hmm. between like three, mm-hmm. yeah between like three or four years. Um, I was working as a motorbike courier, um, delivering blood for like hospitals and stuff like oh, that. Oh wow, okay. Which was like literal. That was literal blood money. I don't, don't know how I was still alive. Um, yeah, uh, she was like, "You'd be really good at this," and it was like, you know, you do a course, personal training. You, it's joined with a massage course. They'll give you a loan, and and I started it, and I, I just never looked back. It was something that was really natural to me. Um, I did the course. I did. I did a lot of practice on my friends. Um, they give you like a, ste- a step up into job opportunities, um, mm-hmm. and I started. Uh, I started out at LA Fitness in Piccadilly. Okay. And it was a, it's, you know, it's a commercial gym. It was packed. I didn't know any better. I'm not, I was never really a, someone who knew anything about the gym environment, but mm. I, I did. Re- I, I did really well. It's the sort of thing where you got someone on a treadmill and go, "Oh, hi. Oh, 
how are you doing? And then you build up the rapport and you go, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. what are you doing? And then, yeah, it's basically you're selling to people on the gym and gym floor about how you can improve their life, which I was very good at doing because mm-hmm. I, I'm good at it's reading people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very, I'm very good at reading people, and I was very good at it. I became, you know, one of the top trainers in the studio, in the studio, in, in the gym, and uh, I was there for like two, three years. But there's only so many hours in a week you can do as a trainer. There's only so many people's mm-hmm. lives you can change, and there's so much energy you've got before. You know, I could see down the road that five years time, I do want to, I didn't want to be there, or in ten years time, I didn't want to be there. How, you know, what is it that I wanted to achieve that? I could do using my personality and um, using the things that I've I've been brought up to to uh, uh, want to do, which is through my my degree business and mm. uh, business and IT was my degree. But uh, you know, how can I put? How can I grow this business? So what year was this? Yeah, you started in. Um, so this was zero seven oh seven. Okay. Okay. So I left, I left there in uh, 2010 and that's when I incorporated More Fit Limited. Wow. Yeah, okay. November, November 2010 and March 2011, yeah. I, opened, I opened a studio in Finsbury Park, hey. which, which, which was not as affluent as it is now. Wow. Um, so that's so where more... So the, the, the more yoga that's there now in Finsbury Park, yeah. that was your first studio, More Fit? That was my first studio, More hey, Fit, yeah. Okay. That was it. That's where it all began. More fit mm-hmm. limited was in that studio. Yeah. So yeah, we opened there in 2011. I opened another one in a personal training studio in St. Paul's, which is below a hummus uh, restaurant called Hummus Brothers, which is now mm-hmm. out, which is now out of business. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I opened another one up there uh, at the end of two, I think it might be 2014 end of 2014 beginning of 2015 was uh, more fit uh, small group personal training which is in Cannon Street around the corner mm-hmm. um, that was three three training studios um, so we had three training studios in 2015 and we grew I was started working in um, I was between the small group personal training studio the St. Paul studio and Finsbury Park studio was running itself. Um, and then we were running that for, for, for a while to about 2016. And um, I'm just racking my brain. The years just gone by. This whole year has mm. literally just like, it's like just fogged my brain so much. I know, I know. Um, so yeah, um, it came to a point where I was thinking about what, what we wanted to do with the business and I was talking, I, I was looking at the, some, some uh, experiences that I, that I had had with yoga and, and how strong I felt with it and I met some prominent yogis, yogis namely Charlotte Welfare, who I'm sure you know, mm-hmm. who, who, um, who sort of gave me the insight into how we could bridge the gap between you know, you know the yoga providers versus yoga offering, yoga offering bit the yoga environment and the yoga providers. So mm. previously, before that, when, when I when I tried to run yoga in in a personal training environment or in a gym environment, a lot of the people that we had were from environments that were out of my control. They hadn't been pre-vetted. It was always, always like, I'm a yogi, oh, yeah, I live in the area, I've got so many people, I can do this, this and this. And then you bring them in and they come in and then suddenly like a, sun, a Sunday morning, you've got phone calls of people outside your gym going, hello, I'm outside the gym, your, your yoga instructor's not there. Oh, no. okay. And I'm like, so I had a long history with like understanding mm-hmm. there was like a disconnect between yeah, there was like there was a there was quality there was a quality issues in terms of what you of who you were allowing to be associated with your business. Mm. But having met Charlotte, it was a case of there we could see there was an emerging scene of people who were much more switched on, who were in a scene of people who were living and breathing yoga rather than people that were approaching me who were a little bit flaky. It was like okay. people who were actually within a world. Who are who are actually you know professional yogis okay. rather than people rather than people that are, that rather than people that are, are have a go have a go yogis. Mm, mm. So from the, yeah, do you want me to continue? Because okay, there is, okay. I mean, it is quite a long story. There is like another four more years for me to fill in. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> do you want me, me to go quick? I can go quick. No, no, 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of my, I suppose, capture in there. What was mm. the one key thing? If you had mm. to pin down one thing that led you to start more yoga, what was it? Capture that in the story. Okay. Yeah. So there was. So I, it was the advent of class pass. That was. That was the. Okay. That was. Yeah. That was the driver for me because for me. Um, for me, when the small group personal training a lady came down, sort of cold called me and said, "Look, we can get someone in here, and we so we can bring people to you. You don't pay us any money; we just pay mm. you." It just sounded like one of those things. Hundreds of people have told me previously, but this one actually came through multi million pound company from America, actually providing clients. So it, it just dawned it dawned on me to, in terms of having larger class sizes and the income that that. Um, uh, class pass could could bring in coupled with what I already knew with the appetite for the the experience that I had with yoga in terms of the amount of people that are interested in in, in it um, and and the benefits that I brought with it um, how we could blend them all together to get me an environment get me to an environment that's out of my out of my comfort zone and out, you know, out of my knowledge zone in terms of being the because like, when you're running a personal training student, it's fine. I'm a personal trainer. I can manage it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm running another business and it's yoga and I'm not a yogi, how do I manage mm -hmm. it? So that's yeah. where, you know, met Charlotte and she was trust, you know, trustworthy by nature. Mm. And I believed in her. She believed in, you know, mm. we believed in each other. And we, and we mm -hmm. grew, we grew, uh, um, you know, we grew it together. So we had, we found a place and we grew it. And uh, class pass was bringing us clientele, and lots of people were coming at the same time, and it was just a wonderful, uh, uh, vibrant mix of of people from uh, people that we're bringing in and class pass bringing in the income coming in, and trying to work out who we are and what we're trying mm -hmm. to do. Because I think I, I didn't start with yoga is going to be it's yoga for the masses. It was actually start because it started in the ten ten. Um, person studio. Um, Which one was that? Old Street again. Old Street's the Old Street's the original uh, um, more more fit studio. Was that so? That was, was that the first more yoga studio. That was the first more yoga studio. It opened it opened together with Exmouth Market, which was again a, beneath another Hummus Hummus Brothers restaurant. Okay. They're both they're both ten mat studios, but right. they were okay. but they were it was basically small group yoga, and it was meant mm -hmm. to be smaller groups, better instructing. Mm -hmm. um, and we had it at a, a discounted rate and, and you know it, it was very it was very strong and uh, it was very it was very energetic in terms of sales and I was like yeah this is this is definitely where as a business as a someone who's into business wh where, where I want to be you don't have to work so hard for the acquisition of interest mm -hmm. whereas the pers personal training you'd be you know you're you're flogging a dead horse and it's mm. excuse, the, excuse the analogy and it's it's and, and no one's calling and um it's yeah it, it was it you know you see who's interested i could see who was interested in it and i could see the, the what people were saying about it. and charlotte had made this amazing um uh, you know roster we had you know great teachers in there you know dave pierce and and uh, Katarina Rayburn and you know some some real big hitters in there like mm -hmm. for, who are who are really prominent yoga teachers now um, and it, it drew a big crowd it was really exciting and we then quickly turned the more more the original more yoga more fit limited sorry the personal training studio into a yoga studio and when we did like the countdown and the pre-sale which were which wasn't our half price uh, what we should normally do half price for life membership it was it was it was 50, it was 15 pounds for 15 days i think oh i can't remember mm. what it was but it, it had it had a deadline i'm sitting there with my wife in the in my lounge and it was just like ching ching it kept like a notification wow. notification notification mm -hmm. and i was saying to my wife i was like i was like this is there's something here i mean this is it was, it was you know it was mm. obvious there was something there it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. this this proposition is it has, has, it's a very it's a very mm -hmm. strong proposition. So from there, that was when the the actual uh, the the journey of more yoga was born. It, that's and that's when 2016. We 
that was the end of beginning of 2016. But it, 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 it wasn't till 2017. So it was 20, beginning of 2016. We opened those two. 2016 March um, was when we turned the Finsbury Park studio into um, a yoga studio. And yeah. then it was another. And then it was another nine months before we opened our next one, which was um, uh, Camden. And okay. That was. Uh, that was our fourth studio and then our fifth studio was uh, Brixton and that was that was really well received and then the next one after that was Allgate and the next one do we keep, do we keep going I'm going to see, I'm going to see if you can do it yeah, chronologically yeah date time location so talking of locations uh, Jamia geez. how do you decide on the locations because you are literally like practically on every high street now which is amazing but how do you decide yeah. where to go? So just for clarity, we're at 30, I think 30, well, actually, I haven't got the clarity myself. We're around about 34 studios. It depends, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't remember exactly how many, but it's around 33, 34 studios, mm -hmm. just for, for everyone to know. Um, so historically, we've had problems opening yoga studios because of planning issues. And there's been mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of archaic red tape around where and where you can put a yoga studio and that's really had a, a massive factor on how we've been able to grow and it's been the bane of my life literally for the last 10 years and and strangely enough and it feels like a dream they've actually just recently changed the laws during covid it's like all right now everyone's got no money and your, your business are completely wrecked yeah 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 not yeah. not not to say our business is wrecked guys i'm, yeah. I'm just yeah. you know um but it is no no i'm just joking um you know just as everyone's on their knees and it's like you know the high streets are dead even though it's, it's been dying for like two years three years maybe even longer we're now going to change the planning laws for you to basically be able to open up a yoga studio on a high street as long as there's not any couple like little small factors that you, you know i won't bore you with now mm. you can move straight you can move straight in like a normal shop and start trading as quick as it takes you to sign a lease which would wow. be which which could be i could probably get a lease done in three weeks wow. whereas normally when i'm doing when we're making studios we normally got like 15 to 20 in in legals and planning and it's been like we've had this whole list of studios that we said we're like this one's gonna open this one this one's gonna open this this one's gonna open mm. it and we've got this whole date of of dates mm. that it's very difficult to actually make any of that work because some of them don't actually come through planning yeah some yeah. of them the legal uh, some of them the landlords there's complications with the head landlords and, and mm. et cetera. it's like so it's never really been a easy thing to do and we've had numerous failures in areas where we've um we've really um not been able to enrich the local area essentially that's how you have to look at it i mean we're mm -hmm. there we're not there to exploit we're there to enrich yeah absolutely. but but with with the uh, um with the completely sort of like emotionless and faceless binary uh, um you know system of the old planning laws it was completely out of our hands and it right. was and, and you, you know you've got people who are working in 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 those departments that are completely under trained and completely overworked and completely underpaid I and mean, yeah. we've, we've had decisions go against us that are that are actual that are actually we're actually you know we've ticked all the boxes we know that we're waiting for the, the the uh, approval and they've they've declined it and it's been declined by the head manager as well and when you go back and you call him you go look sorry we can't reverse it but you can put another application in and then this time we've realized we've made a mistake i'm not going to say that publicly but no, we realized no, no. Say, but you're going to have to go back through it again and it's like a you know it's meant oh, to be eight weeks it's, me it's yeah. meant to be eight it's meant to be eight weeks but mm. it, it, it will take up to four to five months and i've had to go down to down to uh, um, City Hall. I, I literally went up to City Hall for more yoga, uh, more Fit Limited, uh, um, St Paul's or Cannon Street. And I was like, look, get me that person down here now because I need to talk to them. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and they had to come down, not because I was being aggressive, it's because they, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to tell them things mm -hmm. that they, that it's, it's, it was, you know, it, it and, it, and it's, 
you know, you have to feel sorry for them because they, it's wrapped up in so much red tape. Bureauc yeah, red tape and bureaucracy, and they've got so many things, and there's and there, there's not enough people in there, and there's a appeal over here, and there's appeal over there, and there's all this paperwork, and there's a local law, and there's a there's a regional plan, and there's a master plan, and there's all these other things, and it's like, how do you interpret it? And so, thankfully, now that's all out the window. The only issue now is the only issue now is <laughs> where we were like twelve months ago when we wanted to open up one to two yoga studios a month which was mm. a very ambitious target, but one that we believe we could do. Because we, we, we have big ambitions for more yoga. We, mm. want, we want access to holistic well-being for everyone. Everyone in London at the minimum to start with. But we haven't been able to achieve that. But now with the new planning, the change in planning laws, we actually can move straight into places. That's good. Within two weeks, we can start trading. Within That's three great. weeks, we can start trading. Obviously, we need to fit them out. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can do the rustic styles, like, right, it's a, don't worry about the, the kitchen on the side and the, <laughs> the oh, yeah, it's a shoe shop, don't worry about the uh, fitting rooms. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. to the That's fitting rooms and changing room. rooms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the stock rooms and changing rooms. Okay, so that's interesting, because one of my next questions was about, you know, has the lockdown obviously affected the numbers you were going to open, but you're saying this law, the, the change in yeah. the law is now going to help you, providing you can, you know, put it out quickly now so have you revised the number that you wanted to open so what was the original yeah. number you were going for in 2016 well, we, and what's the new number so 2016 we never had the ambition i never had the ambition that was that was me growing something that was organic and mm -hmm. and so it was something organic and it was growing it was like i remember it was like 20 studios by 2025 or something or something like that I can't remember what it was but then we had we had a bit of debt financing where we raised basically put myself into debt <laughs> and uh risking risking my house and that um but, you know that's that's how much I'm putting on the line mm -hmm. for everyone to have to, to do this my house my literal my literal house is on the line um You'll make it work. We got you. We no, got no, no. We, you know, I haven't gone into the. I haven't got have the bit. There's going to be a few bits during this this uh, um, this conversation where I'm going to start begging people, but I'm not going to start yet. Um, you crowdfunding. Yeah. You got <laughs> the good. link ready to send. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, shall I send it? Shall I send it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold back, hold me back, hold me back. We have a couple of questions before you get the link out, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, in terms of future openings, it, we, our hands are tied. Okay. Right now, our hands are really tied. We want to be on every high street. We, we, we are. We're really thinking about an equity fundraise for us to release some of the business for us to then gain gain a lump sum to be able to do what we want. And I think we we're looking into that. We're we're pretty much set on that and mm -hmm. and that's the way we're going to have to do it if it wasn't for covid we would have been all right because the cash flow was decent and we could have grown mm -hmm. organically because we, we've been growing organically and it's thin but our operation is thin you know you look in the studios they're basic studios but mm -hmm. they're, they're meant to be they're meant to be no frills they're meant to be yeah they're meant to be accommodating you know meant to be warm mm -hmm. but you know you're not going to get any scented candles actually no there's no naked naked flames allowed. You better remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> but you know, there's because we've yeah, got no there's showers, no there's no reception. Gels, there's no showers, yeah, yeah. So no we're, fluffy towels. A, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's a different proposition. It's a different proposition. So we're, we're a completely stripped back product, but we try and make it it's robust and it's it's mm. accommodating and it's welcoming. Mm. Uh, and a lot of our wel welcoming aspect is through the brand branding of who we are and what we stand for and the people that come. And the amazing and, features. Uh, yeah, of course. Hold on, I'm going to the combination. Of, yeah, and it's been that's that's been mirrored by our, our teachers, and that's what really makes it is who our teachers are, and that's it's a sort of like a it's it's a it's a you know it's it's a, it's a ecosystem that put the, the teachers are bringing the energy and the and the, the people who are giving the energy and the the environment is is harboring the energy and it's very energetic place. It's a very energetic business to be in. It's very, it's a very warm, it's a very nice place. Like a bit more yoga is a nice business. It's a, 
you know, you go there, you feel good. And, and it's a nice, it, I mean, I feel good. I feel, I say to my wife, I talk about death a lot. She hates it. She hates talking about death. Um, it, as, and I don't know if anyone's going to, I don't care if you judge me, actually. Look, I was just, I just say, look, if, if I died tomorrow, I would, I would be completely happy with my life because really? I, I, I feel that what I've set out, what I've, what I've done already in terms of what, how many, how much access people have got to, well-being that mm. I, I know that that energy is much greater than the negative stuff that i may have done in my life and mm. there, there, there is some of that no i'm only human so yeah so it must be quite liberating to feel that it is liberating and, and i'm very liberal with my uh, with my um, my outlook on life and death I, I have no fear for for that in fact I'm actually quite excited again my bait to my wife uh, she's actually sitting there I'm not, I'm not sure what she's doing but she's she's uh, um, she doesn't like talking about death but I, I've taught my kids from a young a very young age you know and it's quite simple it's it's everything that lives does yeah. mm -hmm. and, and and i'm sure there's actually a yoga uh, I'm, as, a, as i'm not yogic there's probably an actually yoga philosophy that actually says that you don't die and and actually your energy and i and I, I do believe and i completely believe in and the energy moves on to yeah. to somewhere else because there's, there's, there's yeah it, because there's, there, there's virtually there's virtually no chance whatsoever that that what we're doing on this planet earth is actually possible without there being an actual system or mm -hmm. some, sort of, some sort of yeah oh, without doubt without doubt it's too you know there's too many b billions of uh of uh coincidences happening to make it virtually impossible mm -hmm. you mentioned your children how many yeah, children do you have i've got two and one of them just walked in uh, <laughs> boys you want to see, girls, one, want to see one of them yeah so my youngest is lila and she is five years old and she is, she doesn't listen, but she's really, really cute. Okay. And, and she's going through that stage where she's just learning her boundaries. And okay. I'm having to put my foot down a little bit to, to, um, cause it's good, good cop, bad cop. You know, my, my mm -hmm. wife's the, the, uh, wrap, the arms wrap around. I'm the, the, I talk, you know, the wagging the finger, but you know, there's a little yeah. bit of arm, there's a little bit of arm around there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the older one is just a, an embodiment of me. She's just a carbon copy of me. She's like, she's out there. She's a little bit erratic. She's like, she's, but she's, can you say that for about an eight year old ballsy? Is that the right word? She's very confident. confident. Uh, yes, yes, very confident. Okay. She's, not, she's never going to be, have a problem with making friends. Um, Ready to she, take over the business. Ready to take over the family business. My my five year old, she's sliding in. She's sliding in. Okay. Um, yeah, she's having a look at you, but you can't see her. Fishing. Oh, uh, do you want to come and have a sit and show yourself to the camera? Go on. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, come stand up. You don't say anything. Just stand up. All right. She's not going to stand up. Okay. She will. She will stand up, but in in, in her well, own she's time. Ready. In her own time. Exactly. In her own time. Okay, so let's move on to talk about yoga teacher training because you've just started a yoga teacher training. Mm -hmm. Oh, here she is. Oh, hello. Hello, lovely. Yeah. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> oh, no, go on. One sec. Do you want to say hello? No. Okay. So they can't hear, you can't hear them because it's in my head. Okay. Uh, yoga teacher training. Yeah, fire away. So you've just started the first training. Yeah. And the second one starting very shortly. So, why? What made you start the teacher training now and not maybe years before? Because you say things were quite good. You know, you were, you know, making good headway, making a path, community well established. Yeah. So yeah. why not before now? You're right. I think, but I think uh, to have credibility at what you do, you need to be credible at what you do. And yes, we've been credible for a while, but we've only been really. We've only really been expanding since 2017, and okay. so it's 17, 2017, 2018, 2019. So basically, 36 months we've really been putting our stamp on London, and probably, it, you know, for a large majority of those 36 months, you're building up to get to 36. So you weren't that established until you got to the end. But then 2020 has been a write-off. Mm. So you know. It, 
you're growing, you find out who you are, you got your eyes on a different, on a different uh, um, uh, end game, which is what, you know, in terms of what we wanted to do about, you know, yoga for the masses, yoga for the many, not the few. Um, but we've always had ideas of going into yoga teacher training, but it's not as simple as going, all right, let's just go into yoga teacher training, more yoga. More mm -hmm. yoga has a hell of a lot of challenges at mm -hmm. operate, op operating as, as it does. People see 35 studios and they think, oh, they must be minting it or it must be, you know, they must have offices in, in Soho or, or stuff like that. It's like, it's, it's just not, the, it's not the case. It's been, it's been a shoestring uh, um, commitment, you know, sacrifice of a lot of people who are like-minded uh, to get us to where we are. And we've, um, you know, we've grown teacher training for us through our school of Svadhyaya with Charlotte, um, mm -hmm. who's, mm -hmm. who's um, former, or well, she is still um, co-head of uh, um, more yoga teacher training. Uh, but, um, you know, you need to have that chemistry. You know, we had, um, you know, we were, we were, we were offering yoga alliance accredited courses for people who are work who are working within more yoga mm, for, mm -hmm. for, that's great 50 hour training it's been brilliant. yeah yeah and we've done that we've done that numerous times and we've done mm. that for free i think yeah, done it for free. Cool. and i think that's i think that's quite groundbreaking and i think that's and that that comes back to a, a bit about my personality and that's you know that was my that was my endeavor to do that it wasn't and again there's a lot of kickback the kickback is you know you should be charging teachers the kickback mm. is the kickback, you know, and that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's internal or external, there is a price to pay for doing stuff either free mm -hmm. or low cost. Yeah. And, and, and it happens, it happens at every stage. So there are a lot of, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of challenges for what we're doing and yoga teacher training came, um, you know, we did have it in mind and we wanted to develop a uh, you know something that actually belonged to more yoga and that's why mm -hmm. we've we've you know, we were talking to people and you know, we've we're chatting to people were chatting to us and we were chatting to people and i was looking at the best fits of what how what you know what was the right chemistry mm -hmm. for more, more yoga who who is it that buys into the vision of affordability and accessibility and diversity and and all the things that more yoga stands for and um you know, through an extensive set of you know, conversations and and uh, meetings, we we found that Erica, who's who is the leader of uh, our current um, more yoga teacher training mm -hmm. offering, is yeah, she's the she's the person that was the best fit. She she under she was you know, she's a content creator. She understood. Uh, who we are and what we're trying to do and mm -hmm. as a as a yogi you know she's a very uh you know she's very spiritual and she's very authentic and she's mm -hmm. very you know she'll, she'll tell you what she what she means but she, for what we for what i'm espousing and what she believes it's on the same we're on the same wavelength so it wasn't you know after she said she's keen mm -hmm. It was just about marrying how how can we get it off the ground mm -hmm. and one make it affordable and two make it affordable for more yoga because you have to sink a lot you have to sink a lot of investment in to build mm. the actual offering because you can't yeah. do 200 hours without having to pay yeah. for the manual and that costs x amount you know it's not a it's not a free mm -hmm. it's not a, it's it costs a lot of money and it's a lot of and it needs to be right and how many trainings sorry so this is our first training that we've got that mm -hmm. we started i think it started about six or oh, about two months ago or something like mm -hmm. that it's, yeah. we've got 35 people on it okay and it was never meant to be online it was it was always meant to be it was there was uh, there yeah. was some rumblings of online 200 hours before but um, it was never meant to be online, but mm -hmm. Erica has already done 50 hour online before and she's very well versed in doing stuff digitally and, mm -hmm. and she was already ahead of the game in terms of having an online offering even before the pandemic um, 
kicked in. So, you know, she's, she's a very, uh, an amazing person to have on our team. And, and again, everything that happens in more yoga is all about meeting people and finding the right people and having the right chemistry. And that's how, you know, from Charlotte in the beginning or even before that, you know, Bex, Rebecca, who, who's head of brand and marketing and a very, very close friend of mine. She, she's been there from the beginning mm -hmm. doing the stuff mm -hmm. at Morfit. She's been with us for over 10 years, but yeah. she, yeah, she's a, she's an amazing person. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she, um, you know, she is, she believes in the accessibility aspect of what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And she believes, mm -hmm. and she understands that we're disruptors and that's what our, our team really you know that's the great thing about more yoga we have a team that understands mm -hmm. the the nature of what we're trying to achieve but at, but during that journey as i said before there's a lot of pushback you know mm -hmm. you, you when you're disrupting such a scene you get you get people that are not that. gonna yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that's and that's just the nature of people it's like mm -hmm. people are always going to push back you know it's like we used to play football uh, back in the old back in the day and somebody used to go and go whose ball is it? <laughs> like, like the person whose ball it is actually runs the whole game. I mean, yeah, the, person, yeah. the person whose ball it is might be five years old. You know, everyone might be playing who's like 16. It has no bearing on it. It's like, you know, it's, it's about, it's an energy system. Mm. Everything, you know, has to work. It's, you know, we, we, we all have to live together. We all have to work together. It's like, there's going to be little snippets of energies popping out here and there where people are upset and, and and conversely there's thankfully we you know to do with more yoga there's lots of people that are champions of what we do and, mm. and, 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 and i love it but that's just part and parcel of being who we are you know we we used to see fifteen thousand people a week that's a lot yeah. that's, a, that's a hell of a lot of people you know you mm -hmm. can fill a you can fill a league two football stadium with that maybe half full of league league okay. one football stadium one one of the questions I ask the teachers of color when they come on as part of their journey, I ask them, as you know, you know, where was their first training? And I ask them, how many people were on the training? Like I asked you, and then I say, yep. how many people of color were on the training? So he says about 30, 35 people on the training. How many people of color mm. are on the training? And then I also know you did offer BIPOC, um, which was great. You offered a um, BIPOC scholarship. So do you want to share? The numbers there yeah so um we have out of 30 i think it's 35 mm -hmm. uh we have uh we have three uh black students two mm -hmm. who are two are, two are who are through the bipod scheme okay. we were we were oh, yeah so we were taking yeah, the scholarship scheme excuse me uh we were going to just take one Mm -hmm. um, but we take we took two. I can't remember the reason why. I think it's because I'm such an amazing person. Um, just, I'm just I'm just a giver. I'm just a giver. Uh, we had eight applicants Excellent. for the for, for the scholarship. Mm -hmm. um, we you know you have to whittle out people who are who are haves who mm -hmm. could because we we have to remember it's a, it's a relatively inexpensive training program. I think it's like fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is. Which is when you think about it, it's it's a very normal, not nominal, but it's a essentially for what what you know what the standard price, not standard, the market price is. Well, uh, four thousand five hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Look, look, fifteen hundred pounds is a lot of money. It is <laughs> a lot of money if for for a, for for a lot of people. But yeah. we had to whittle out the people who 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 were the real people that needed it, rather than the people that that, that didn't need it. So we had a little process where. We wrote them out and then we had also meetings with them to see if they were right fit, right fit mm -hmm. in terms of, I, I, obviously I wasn't privy to any of that stuff, mm -hmm. but we, we had two. And there's also another uh, BIPOC candidate that came in straight through her own means. And there's another um, East Asian uh, um, student who's also practicing. And then everyone else is, is non-BIPOC. Okay. So... I'm sure because you've you could actually reel those numbers off, which is great. And we hope, you know, going forward each year, those numbers across the whole yoga industry starts to increase. And I've been trying to get the numbers from other studios, but let's be honest, they haven't been recording it. So 
we yeah. have moved forward that you know, we see with everything that's happened with Black Lives Matter, uh, Floyd, rest in peace, that we can, you know, have a clearer number, a clearer idea of numbers and diversity going forward. So thank you for what you're um, doing for the yoga teacher training. There's more to come. So now I'm going to move on to the lows and highs of the wellness industry. What comes to mind? Start with the lows first and end up on any highs that come to mind. I think um, I think the lowest low was this was this thing that happened um, this year. Um, I don't know if you experienced it. It was called uh, COVID nineteen. Um, I mean, it's like, it's literally like, how much lower do you want to go? It's literally, it hasn't, it still hasn't gone as low as it's going to get. It's for us, it's getting lower and lower. It's like a, it's like a world record, world record limboist. It's just getting lower and lower and lower. So low, they're going to be going inverse into the ground. Um, it's been, I mean, you can't get any lower than this. I mean, besides like some sort of like war or or play, I mean, this is equivalent to a plague, isn't it, really? Um, mm -hmm. Some sort of like Great Fire of London or something like that. It's like, you can't get any lower than this, but, um, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big low. I mean, you just can't top that low. But previous, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stop going about how low it is. Um, if it wasn't a, high, if you'd like. Okay, but if there wasn't a pandemic, um, what would be a low with more yoga? Mm. Do you know what? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So no, no pandemic. I'm, I'm, see, I'm giving myself my impressions here. Look, come on. Uh, what would I say would be a low? Uh, okay. So pre, is it more fit limited or when more yoga before more yoga? Whatever, whatever comes well, yeah, during, so during more yoga, when we had the Finsbury Park studio open, we had the, the hummus restaurant that we opened, the Exmouth Market studio and the St. Paul studio. It went bust because of the adverse effects of what was happening on the high street and um yeah i mean we we were basically we were we were subtenants so we lost all right. our rent. okay we lost all, we lost our rental deposits and stuff like that. yeah both both the entities in those instances were accessed through the restaurant so mm -hmm. you go through the restaurant and down some stairs right. okay and you make your way but look if you want to grow a business you got to hustle Right, Absolutely. and that's and, that, and Exmouth yeah. Market was our Exmouth yeah. Market was our was our second studio, and we, mm. we that's that's the sort of hustle you got to do. You got to you got to think you got to think uh, uh, laterally like that. You got to think mm -hmm. out of the box. You got to be able to make things work. You got to be able to see it, see a space and go right. What can we do with this? Can we make it work and believe in it? Mm. And that's what we did, and that's where more yoga was born born from. Um, so yeah so closing down those two studios was definitely a low um, mm -hmm. and and you know there was people in St Paul's and in Exmouth Market who you know that was regular income from those people's livelihoods mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and there's and the, and the people who are practicing there you know the people who get personal training and the yeah. people who are getting uh, you, you know yoga services in the Exmouth Market studio they you know some of them may have never done a yoga another yoga session class since some mm -hmm. of them may have may have not. You'd like to think thought that you know old streets old streets around the corner, maybe they could have walked mm -hmm. ten minutes. But mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. one thing one thing more yoga's done is made yogis lazy. Back in the old days, people used to travel like an hour to go and find a yoga teacher. Nowadays the yoga teacher leaves, they're like, Oh, I'd be sorry to see you leave. <laughs> sorry to see you leave. Okay. Are you going? Are you going to South London? Oh yeah, sorry to see you leave. <laughs> okay. But there's a more yoga down there. So, yeah, yeah. See you later. So share a high then of the wellness industry. Uh, the the high of the wellness industry. I think one thing one thing um, to do with the highs from the COVID aspect is is to, is the actual support from our community. Mm. Um, we could we could only be and and just being frank, we are we're not in a critical situation. We're in a situation and it's pretty dire, but it's not critical. I've, I don't know if you've seen emails going around this week. There's a few studios that are really critical because they haven't got. We've basically been keeping as many members on, paying for for yeah. subs for subs as much as they can, and that's really helped to bolster um, our our 
costs and our costs are they are they're they're a very very large amount of costs when you think about it, there's just a lot of costs um, okay. it, the the contribution that is being offered or graciously given is a big help towards um you know balancing the books the the, the books aren't balanced we are in a we mm. are in a we are in a deficit but with government support and the the little deficit we're hoping that um we're hoping that like you know there's going to be it's going to be a point where the mm. trend the trend starts to move upwards and we can start closing that deficit um <laughs> Yeah, she's got a money box, multicolored money box. Oh, okay, entrepreneur. Show yeah. <laughs> she's an entrepreneur. And okay. you can hear, you can hear it's not rattling because it's just notes in there. Just notes in there. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. Just notes and, and cryptographic. Uh, um, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, yeah, it's just Bitcoin okay. in there. So, last few questions, last couple of questions yeah. for open the floor for QA because I'm sure there's lots out there. Yeah. So, what got you through lockdown? Personally? Because you got you through the first lockdown, and then is this the second lockdown easier? Do you want to just unpack that a little bit in terms of, in, in terms of what? In terms of just, yeah, just, you personally, as a family. Me personally. Leader, what, how so, do you navigate lockdown? Yeah, I mean, didn't Did you find, find lockdown? I didn't find, you know, our house is our house is quite quite big house. It's like sixteen hundred square feet, so it's not like you know an average flat would be like mm -hmm. five or six five or six hundred square feet. So we've got like three times the amount of space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got a lot of space. We've got a garden, and um, we've just got space. We've got enough space to be able to have space. And the first lockdown, you'd go out and have exercise, and you know mm -hmm. there was there was still a working day happening. So I was annexing myself you need to ask my wife a question about actually how what happened during lockdown because <laughs> i i do a lot of annexation going on in my life what where, does annexation mean break that down well please. well my wife's an amazing mum and she <laughs> she's like a super mum and she's she's like a and it's public all my friends know she's like a she she's like 90 10 and you know, she wake up in the morning, and goes, "Where's the kids?" I like, I wake, I wake up in the morning, and go, you know, what's happening with that studio? <laughs> yeah, but in it, in essence, the business is my baby. Yeah, it, is, it, yeah. it, it is. It, yeah. it is my. I don't wake up, and I'm just being completely honest. I don't. The first thing I don't. The first thing when I wake up isn't what, where's my kids, what they're eating. It's like, what's happening with you know. What what needs to Black be Horse Road. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Exa exactly Black Horse Road. What's happening yeah. with Black Horse Road? Yeah, exactly. Why is the electricity taking two months to get connected? I mean, this there is the go. sort of stuff. This is the sort yeah. of stuff that 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 we have. But during lockdown, actually, and I've I think my my wife's probably not fed, not believe my numbers so much. But it's been more like she's trying to work it down to sort of like eighty twenty. But I'm trying to work towards seventy thirty in terms of how much more I'm doing with the kids. Okay. So, so I mean, one thing lockdowns helped me to do is become a lot closer to my kids. Like, really, like I'm much, much more of a, of a <laughs> homeboy now. I can like love being mm -hmm. with my my kids, and I can, you know, I, it's taught me to be a better dad. Definitely. That was lock. That was lockdown one. But you know, lockdown one was fine. And I don't know how long it was. How long was it? Like eight weeks. I don't even know how long it was. How long was it? You that annexed off. Yeah, how long was it? It's like six months, March to. No, no, the the the, the restrictions where you were till we it was March till we opened our studios in August the first, but they right. were allowed to open up. It was January, March, April, May, June, July, July, mid July when they were allowed to open. Okay, to yeah, yeah. So, okay. so it was. April, May, June, July. So it's four months. And has this lockdown felt Four easier, months. different, or no? Well, time? this lockdown, we went to Cyprus. Hey. So, Amazing. yeah, so we went to you Cyprus meet, to meet some friends. No, 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 I'm back. I'm actually in You're quarantine. At the, I'm, back, I'm actually in quarantine at the moment. Oh, okay. Excellent. So okay. I'm in quarantine. So we went, we went to Cyprus to see some friends. Uh, flights, mm. flights were really cheap, like £90. Pounds. Oh, 
Okay. Um, accommodation was crazy cheap, like literally like 200 pound a week. It's just an amazing place to be. It's sun like 10, 10 months of the year. Amazing. Um, we're actually thinking about Stop the Press, a retreat location out there. So Ooh. might be a continuation of, of the more yoga offering. Yeah, we're well, looking. Because that's going to be, you know, one of the last questions before Q&A was like, what's coming up for 2020? What's okay. coming up for 2021? Well, so yeah. retreat in Cyprus. Say again, yeah, retreat in Cyprus would be a good one. Um, we're just working it out in terms of, we're gonna put a survey out there in terms of how many people are interested and we're gonna be doing more of an international survey because we don't wanna keep on relying just on more yoga clientele. Obviously mm -hmm. being, in mm -hmm. being in Cyprus is four, it's four hours away. We wanna be able yeah. to, if we're investing that much money in a sort of wellness retreat center, Mm -hmm. We need to be able to have some people closer to home okay. <laughs> to be able to come. It's like, yeah, we've got a retreat, but only three people have turned up. So we'll be invested. <laughs> we invested 400K in it, and uh, there's three people so have turned is, up. Is it your vision that it's a space you have all year round, or it's a space you just go to at set times of the, of the year? No, it'd be all year round. Okay. I don't think you really go to Cyprus in uh, uh, December and January. They're quite wet. I think there's, okay. it's, I think it's, um, uh, comparable to the UK's amount of rain, but in, in two months rather than um, over like UK does it nice, does it nice and spread out. <laughs> what, else, what else is coming that you'd like to share? So, um, what, do I, what would I like to share? It's a good question. So yeah, there's actually, there's actually, yeah, so there's actually some, some, um, interesting things happening we've got um there's still a couple studios coming through we're actually legally bound by uh, some agreements we did to continue with a couple studios so we've got black horse red was one of them there's another couple more that it's called it's called an agreement for lease which means that you've signed you sign an agreement that when planning comes through mm -hmm. that when it comes through you have to sign the lease right okay. so and that was done ages ago pre-pandemic so now right. it takes that it takes that long so that's come through okay they're like, right they're like right we ain't letting you out of this ready you're, to sign okay you're gonna, well you're gonna have to sign otherwise you know you'd be liable for the lease so there's a couple other projects that we're still liable for mm -hmm. uh, that, we're, that, we're, that, that we're confident about there's one of them happening in uh, um elephant park which is elephant and castle which is just stones <laughs> stones throw away from uh, um uh, Bermondsey Studio, which mm -hmm. is a stone's, which is a stone's throw away from uh, Tower Bridge Studio, which okay. is a stone's throw away from the Cannon Street Studio. But that's that was always our vision to be mm -hmm. a stone's throw away from a, from a more yoga studio. We've never we've never been shy to be, to be like that. But we uh, twenty twenty one is is def, uh, well twenty tw yeah sorry the rest of twenty there is no rest of twenty twenty. <laughs> there's one, one more month. Yeah, one more month. You never know. Okay. There's not. There's not much happening in 2020. 2021. It might actually be actually a little something happening in 2020. So we got. So obviously we've been we've been practicing online. Uh, um, excuse mm. me. For the, excuse me for the question for the question, but are you teaching online for us? I think you are. I am. You are. I so, so just for just for clarity's sake, I don't work on the operations side of no, it for the yoga operations. Yeah, I am. So I, so so excuse me for asking silly questions. But uh, um, uh, so we're gonna be making the more yoga online offering a more comprehensive offering. It's gonna be called mm -hmm. and this is this is the announcement, it's the drum roll please. Drum roll. Yeah, there you go. And introducing for okay. December, maybe December, maybe December 2020 in a soft launch. Okay. Coming to, coming to your mobile phones. And maybe, maybe your TV, if you can plug it in. More maybe. Yoga Wellness TV. More Yoga Wellness <laughs> TV. Woo, woo, woo. That's right. That's right. Okay. More Yoga Wellness TV is going to be launching. Amazing. Amazing. What's this space? Exactly. So what More Yoga Wellness TV is, and, and Liz, Liz, is she here? She um, had to leave. She sent her appointment. She had to, she had to leave. Yeah, yeah. So More Yoga Wellness TV is basically, uh, it's just, a, it's just a, uh, what is, it's basically what we've got now. And it's an expansion of what we want to do both in the studios and to a wider audience. And that is to base our offering around four main pillars, which is uh, um, the mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. and, and emotion, emotional. 
Mm. And, and, and we actually might have like it says be four pillars and we joked about it already we might have a fifth pillar like a more yoga like a more yoga studio little fifth pillar coming in the middle of the studio Wonderful. and that'd be and that'd be financial health it, you need you know just to make Absolutely. sure people, so, I mean it's one thing that I, it's a it's a bugbear of mine which is why why in the UK and probably even worldwide are people not taught about financial You're education? Right. Why, why aren't you taught about how to make money absolutely work for yourself? Why right. aren't you taught yeah. about how to, you know, what are the key assets you should mm. be asset? You're spot on. Yeah, spot exa on. exactly. So maybe I might be one of the contribute con contributors in that, but there needs to be more education yeah, about, about yeah. how people right. get rich uh -huh. and how people stay rich. And yeah. That that's something mm -hmm. that we're really uh, keen on on growing, and we're gonna, you know, we're really working on the mind, body, and spirit aspect and emo emotional. And there's, there's a big crossover between mind and and, and emotional. Um, is this gonna be stuff live, or is it gonna be some of it recorded? So a lot of it's gonna be recorded. A lot of the classes are gonna be hybrid classes within our studios. So it's gonna be like a camera in the side of the studio. So they right. get the, mm -hmm. the feeling, mm -hmm. they get the feeling, the students are gonna get the feeling of, uh, of students being in, in their class. Mm -hmm. We're also gonna be doing lots of Zoom classes, which have been well received this round of mm -hmm. lockdown 2.0, which mm -hmm. was probably an oversight we should have done in lockdown 1.0. Um, and we're gonna do, um, what, what else was in there? We're gonna do, do live stuff pre-records um and then we're gonna do like lots, lots of workshops and then we're gonna do like a lot of upsells and in terms of like value adds upsells you know mm -hmm. you, you're following mm -hmm. someone who's doing a breathing course they can you can then go into something more substantial that, that can turn you maybe into a practitioner or something that can get you into uh, you know to, to deepen your practice personally um, so that's what we're doing for 2020, beginning soft launch December, and mm -hmm. then going through uh, 2021. It's going to be a web-based app, so you can just uh, plug it into your TV, have it on your phone. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be really good. It's going to be yeah. yeah we're, we're growing it. I've been had a conversation today with um, some of our friends at a place called the House of Togetherness, mm -hmm. which, and they do a lot of stuff about, as you can probably gather, about connections and. Mm -hmm. and they do a lot of stuff about intimacy, a lot of stuff about like sexual intimacy and intimacy and relationships and, and human behavior and stuff like that. We're just having conversations about how we can get those people to talk to our people, Liz and, and Bex and people like that, just to work out how, yeah. what is it, what is it that's on offer in, in, you know, in the marketplace or in the sphere or in the, in the mm -hmm. wellness marketplace that we can bring to people to, to, to make their lives better. Cause essentially, my, my, my motivation is how can I bring as much health and wellness to people, to the widest audience at the lowest possible price? And that's, that's, that's something, that's something I, I, the, the price bit is, is something that I'm like, that's the bit that's, you know, the quality and everything obviously has to be great, but mm -hmm. the price the price bit is normally the biggest determining factor because the majority of people in this society that we're in don't have money because of the way the society is structured mm -hmm. it's like everything is just getting filtered to the top one percent yeah. or zero point one percent it's there's just everyone's just fighting for scraps yeah. so so for us you know like with the you know over the over 65 practice at more yoga for three pounds the the uh, per class the uh, blue lights and and it, you know people who work for nhs mm -hmm, they're, mm -hmm. they're they're free workers, yeah. they're all, yeah. all they're, they're all free they do online for free and i think yeah. i think i think they're even practicing for free don't don't quote me on that um <laughs> and and people who are and this is i, I know it wasn't part of the question but something that i really want to okay. share is mm -hmm. well, something i really want to share is that um we are committed to try and help the people who have the least and that is something that the health and wellness industry do not do not target. I think there may be stuff now through the NHS where yeah. if you've got like a ailing yes. issue and it's chronic, they go right. Here's a gym membership. You can go to a class, but they're catching them too late. Yeah. So yeah. we we we're uh, so what? Yeah. So basically, how we're helping these people is basically anyone who's on universal credit which is basically a, an indicator, not necessarily, but it's a good indicator of people who are on the lower mm -hmm. socioeconomic uh, um, uh, bracket in life. Mm. Uh, um, how can we give essential services 
so do these people do these people uh without costing them much and and actually and it's something because i'm so price conscious mm. I, i'm actually like it's three pound too much should it be two pound should it be one pound or should it even be free wow yeah and these are that's what how that's how my brain works and my motivation is how can how can we how can we achieve that and what what is another? I mean, really, it shouldn't be three pounds. It probably should just be one pound, a nominal amount, because you because mm, mm. actually actually I don't really want to go into the story, but uh, f- free doesn't work. If it's free, people don't turn up. Yeah, 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 if you exactly. get if you get them to invest something into it, mm-hmm. then yeah. then they're more likely to turn up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So actually, just in case uh, Daniel or Bex or mainly Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, if you listen to this and rewind, we want to make the people who are on Universal Credit. One, one pound, one pound only. Um, and um, actually, whilst we're there, just quickly, whilst we're talking about uh, Daniel, just wanted to quick um, little shout out to, to my team because our team is an amazing team. And you're part of the team, Yvonne. You're not part of the central administration team, but you're a vital mm-hmm. part of our wider teaching team and an ambassador for more yoga. And you're as important as any other cog in in you know, mm-hmm. part of our business, but but particularly in this in this um, uh, moment, I, I think you know people like Daniel who do, who do like seven day weeks, mm-hmm. Bex who does also you know she's always available on WhatsApp and messaging. Uh, uh, my wife is also she's had to put up with me and has to struggle. She's always lashing. Don't worry, she's always lashing back. She always lashes out because I'm always winding her up. Um, <laughs> But you know the, the people in in our central team, you know, Nora and Drezzy, uh, uh, AKA, yeah. a, AKA Fuzzy Bear, uh, and, yeah. and you know all our teachers and like Liz mm-hmm. Jogley and all, all the people in there who who are part of the team. It's such a you know we've got such an amazing. There, there, there's no friction. Mm. I'll go in there now. You know they can just talk straight at me and they can even yeah. you know there's not like it's not a hierarchical system. I don't believe in those sort of systems. You're, you're mm-hmm. as a customer service operative, your your point is as valid as someone who's in the senior management team, or even myself. I'll take you know, it's not it's not like an old structure where it's like it's come like a pyramid and stuff, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I, I just wanted you. Thank yeah, you I think you know that, but that's that's how we got that's how we got here, and mm. there there will be. We will be coming back from this, and I'm sure I'm sure of it. There is, you know, there's a big struggle out there, and I'm we are really struggling. I'm really struggling. It's a really, <clears throat> even though there's a black hole, and we're losing money each month. There is there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm yeah. working. You know, we've we've asked a lot. We've asked a lot from people. We've asked a lot of our teachers. Um, like in terms of you know, there's a lot of sacrifices they've had to make in terms of yeah. financial financial sacrifices, and also you know. They leave people in limbo if they haven't got work. What do they do with their lives? You know, we haven't Thank been able to help. We haven't been got. We haven't. You know, it's difficult for us. We're in a difficult position, and we've asked from our students. We've asked them for. You know, we've capped their memberships. You know how hard it is for us as someone who wakes up and goes, "How can I give someone more? How can I make someone's prices cheaper?" Mm. For me, to, for me to then say, "Look, we're going to have to cap memberships because it, we just cannot afford." Those numbers just don't work in a in an environment where it's reduced class number sizes and and there's no upside in terms of income. Mm. So there's been sacrifices from the relationship with us and our and our um, our students. There's been sacrifices with what the optics that we put out in terms of not the optics, the actual reality of what we mm. are, are, yeah. are, off, are offering isn't as accommodating as it used to be. Um, and and there's you know and, and landlords. I mean, you know, big shout out to the landlords out there that are that are on point. Big shout out to the landlords that are the ones that are out there who are on side. But you know, mm. unfortunately, those people are few and far between. You know, thumbs down to the ones that are trying to take us to court. Thumbs down to the ones that are trying to get full. Trying mm. to get the ones that are trying to get full asset value. Like nothing's happened. Yeah, they can defer it. Yeah. But what we have to pay full asset value, whereas our, our complete, you know, we've gone from 9,000 members down to under almost 3,000 members. Wow. That's, yeah, yeah. that's, mm. that's, that's a heavy, heavy price to pay. Yeah. But, yeah. but we have a lot. Through of, COVID. 
that's COVID. Okay. No, we wanted to go to 15,000. We were like about to breach 10,000. We've gone down to be beneath 4,000 members. Okay. And yeah, as I said, we're in a loss. It's a, it's a loss making business. It is. And it's, it's, we, there's been government help. And there's mm -hmm. a little bit more, there's a smidgen more of government help now, yeah, but, but, but students, students are paying and that's mm -hmm. really helping us. And that's sort of bridging that gap. And that's the reason why we haven't sent out emails to say, you know, you know, more yoga question mark or do more yoga question mark. We haven't had to send those emails, but we've had that, we've had that thought process. Mm -hmm. We haven't had to have, we, we haven't had to have it because people are, they believe in more yoga and they believe in the energy that more yoga gives. And they buy, they buy into what we're trying to achieve. They buy into you, Yvonne. They buy into Liz. They buy into all our teachers. They buy into affordability. They buy into the fact that some of them have to pay £75 a month in the top tier studios yeah. so, that, yeah. so that someone can pay £3 uh, per class who, who has to eat, uh, you know, who is eating microwave pizzas or, or, mm. their, children, or their children are eating uh, two meals a day or one meal a day. You know, it's like, you know, that's part of, that's part of, what you know the ecosystem of, who, mm. of what we are and what we're trying to achieve and it again it's like thank you to you know everyone who's supporting us it's like we literally we literally could not be here in the position where we're expanding a online offering and we're mm. thinking about how we can move forward we would just be our business because it is it is the it's always been and it's one of my mantras the high cost of low prices mm. and 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 just for full transparency because we have no gripes about our, our numbers on average and this was our best year this last year on average at 35 studios we made ten thousand pound per studio and if you think about that as it's 350k that's a that's a decent large sum of money but mm. Mm. Um, you know, you get one person, in, you get one person working in a, as a city banker that earns three times yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? It's just one person. Mm. And they're, probably only, they're probably only doing like 30 hours a week. Mm. Um, yeah, we're making £10,000 per studio mm. per year. That's, that's, it's, it's literally like, it's a very, very low number. Mm. So it's a, it's a very thin ice that we're on. Yeah, but with government help and, and, yeah. and, <laughs> and, with, and, and people helping us, we we don't mind being in that position. That's what we built. That's what we built ourselves on. We don't mind. I'm not here. I'm not here to be. I'm not here to drive a Ferrari and throw an extra no. money on the road. No. I, all no. I'm trying. All I'm trying to achieve is how can we take something that's amazing that really changes people's lives, and how can we get generate it to a wider audience? And and mm -hmm. and an actual byproduct of the COVID is that actually we're going to be able to have a really an amazing high quality well-rounded comprehensive wellness offering to basically the world now through more yoga wellness tv so i think maybe there may be actually you know some some silver linings to this crazy cloud i'm gonna stop you because you've got stop talking. a wonderful audience here and we've been hearing your amazing 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 journey i know they're probably burning to ask some questions I think pause, have a breather, have to I be now, so just so you have. Thank you for your amazing story and being so open and so honest. And thank you for everything you've done with, you know, keeping all of this teacher and the teams employed, engaged through COVID. But it's now time to take some questions from the lovely audience that have been with us since half past seven. So it's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. You're welcome to come off mute and ask a question directly, or you can type it in the chat box. And while you think about the question, I'll just share in the chat box. So from Valeria, hi, Shamia. I want to say a huge thank you for the support we've received this year in such difficult circumstances. Thank you, Absolutely. Valeria. Thank you, Valeria. I'm glad we can help. We're, we're trying our best here. Thank you for being part of our team. And Liz you... sent her apologies. And... Tyrants rightly said everything is transient and impermanent. I think that's when you were talking about death earlier. Yes. Yes. So I've caught Shamir in full flow for some questions. So don't <laughs> be sitting there, people, in silence. <laughs> ah, lovely. Jenia, come off mute and ask your question. Hello, Shamir. Hi. Hi. One second. I'm just, plug I'm, I'm just, I'm just plugging my laptop in because... 
we've been here for so long and I've, obviously the more i talk the faster the battery goes down okay where are we who are we talking to it's me Nia. jen okay hold on i'm just gonna i'm just gonna cancel the spotlight video okay here we go <sighs> go for it ah oh, hi jen ah oh, there you go jen a friendly face look she's wearing a more yoga top beautiful i know i, I saw that i know i know that i'm not trying to sell ice to the eskimo guys it's just that this was the only thing that i had and yeah, when I yeah. camera, I realised that <laughs> I'm shamelessly plugged in the studio. <laughs> what a wonderful, what a wonderful thing to do. I was thinking about wearing my more yoga hoodie. Uh, I had my, I actually had uh, my youngest daughter in a more yoga hoodie the other, the earlier. Uh, and I was like, put it on because I'm going to put you on camera later. And she was like, this is about two hours before. And she's like, daddy, I'm too hot. <laughs> I'm like, oh, keep oh, it on. Oh. <laughs> Keep it on, keep it on. You're gonna be on camera later. And she's like, oh, I'm so hot. And then I take it off. Yeah, it, it's gorgeous. I live in it, which is a good thing for you when I'm not in my home, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Michelle, Michelle, can you just put the more yoga hoodie on uh, Lila for a little modeling session? She's on okay, so Jen, do you have a question? Go on, please I hit me up. I don't have a question so much. It's more of an observation, really. Um, well, thank you for um, sharing your such a compelling and open um, story of your life and the life of more yoga. Um, I love the analogy of um, the, the analogy of the teachers and what they bring to more yoga and them being a part of an ecosystem because um, you mentioned a lot about them bringing energy and in turn, they also affect the energy of your business. Now, how I came to yoga is that a good few years ago, about seven years back, I started practicing hot yoga. And it was one of the teachers at the hot yoga studio who mentioned that she also taught in more yoga. And because I liked her and I was really um, um, affected by her teaching, I thought, well, let me just check out this more yoga studio. So I went along, not realizing that it was actually the stronger, more capable, more competitive sibling of more fit. And I think that the philosophy of more yoga, you mentioned that it's, um, it's a nice business. It's not simply a nice business. I think that through my own experience, there's a lot that's brought to it. Um, and I think that oh, you spoke a lot about connections. And I, I find that with more yoga, it's this sense of togetherness that being in the studio brings. It's very friendly and very inviting. Um, obviously you have the exceptional quality of teachers um, in all various different studios, but it's also, I think that it's also um, the opportunities that you give to students of all different levels, as well as different Londoners that they can visit different studios around. And I think that that's obviously morphed into other things. So you spoke about more yoga wellness TV and the scholarships and the apprenticeships. And I just think that you should just carry on. I know it's been a very tough year, I know that you know it's been a very challenging year for individuals as well as businesses like More Yoga. But I know that you know you're incredibly determined, dynamic, human <laughs> entrepreneur, <laughs> businessman. <I'm, laughs> and I know that you'll just keep it will just keep thriving. And I can't wait to see how it will continue to progress. Thank That's you, it. Jen. Thanks, Jen. You're most welcome. Thank, thank you, for, you. The, thank for, you Jen. For, for, for that, it's brilliant. So I have, do you want to respond in any other way, Shamir? Before we move to the next question I've got from Emma in the box. I had some things to respond to, but she went on for so yeah, long. I, I, she went on for so long that the, the thread, I lost I lost the thread, my, my brain doesn't. Me? Yeah, because you, as a man, you can only keep dealing with like, sort of like one subject matter, sorry. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Jamir, it's, the fact that you morph from more fit, yeah. the fact that the teachers are incredible and they're part of the ecosystem, right? And um, that they bring a certain energy to your business and that en and their energy affects how we as students um, enjoy more. Yes, work. yes, uh, that's what I had. So I had, I actually had, I actually had a, um, actually, there's actually been quite a few, like prominent people and a few businesses are trying to work out how we generate such a good community 
and Daniel's had meetings with people trying to work out, you know, they think it's to do with like, um, it's like our, our uh, you know, the designs of the studios or, or uh, um, yeah, some, some abstract stuff. But actually people, people, the reason why, in my opinion, why more yoga is so good is, is because we just appeal to people who are just normal people. I think when you have a lower price point and people are, um, they, you just bring in a wider selection of society. I think people just come and they, there's less of a front and people are just more open to be able to be with each other. I've always found that when you when you go to the higher echelons, a lot of people have higher expectations and they're more highly strung and they're not so, uh, um, they're not so used to be with, people f who are normal people is like, oh, who, what is this person? What, they get in a bus? Oh, what is this, what? They get Ubers? Who are these people? I mean, one quick one quick story to back that up. I, there's a, um, it's actually a fitness studio they do. I'm not gonna tell you what they do, but they do, it's a high-end thing. And they're out down in Kensington or something like that. And there's like 20, 20 25 pound drop-in. And she was telling me, I was like, look, you need to be, you need to be more, you need to be truly, uh, accessible when you're doing your uh, your, your your discounts because normally when you look at these high end places their discounts like it's a crazy it's a crazy but you couldn't fathom it if you're an actual uh, normal normal person in society it's like right normally your drop in is twenty pound but we're gonna give you fifteen percent off and it's like who who can afford when they haven't got a job seventeen pound fifty. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, who are these people that got seventeen pound fifty without a job? And I just find that um, we, you get a, you get a more, you get, a, you know. I feel that the community, one one aspect of why the community is so strong is just because we're just dealing with people who are just normal Londoners, like people don't who have, who have, um, who are all, but you know, they're all buying into the same thing. Uh, which is accessibility and access to to health for all. I, that's one thing that I've I really feel that that molds it all together. Okay, sorry to interject there, but I think that you're doing yourself a disservice because I've been to other um, affordable studios. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not talking about the high end ones that are like, you know, hundred pound for your monthly, but I've been to other. Um, studios and they don't have the sort of um, the connections and the energy that you spoke mm -hmm. of they just don't so I think it's a testament really to more yoga and um, the philosophy behind more yoga yeah I agree I, I think my, my, my point was just one part of it I think that that's what brings that's what that's what that's one one piece of it I think but thanks Jen beautiful thanks Jen so Emma, question, question from Emma W, and she's also a student on the 200 hour TT. Yay! Yoga. So Emma's question is, are you ever going to expand out of London to somewhere like Manchester? I know the business model would really work well considering no one else is doing the same. <laughs> um, I, historically, I would have said no, because... Um, it takes a lot to be able to do the things we do in terms of having um, a teacher pool, a cleaning pool. Um, marketing can be done from central office, but um, like the, the fit outs, fit outs, you need to find local builders and stuff like that who are on the same page. I think it's quite, there's quite a few barriers to entry for certain areas. Um, but I mean, I mean, the biggest constraint is teach, teaching quality. Um, and that's always been an issue. And it has always been like, right, we can take our head teacher trainer down there and do a crash course for all those people that are qualified and see who make it. That's one way to do it. But I think now we have uh, online yoga teacher training and it's not, it's actually a really high, highly, um, you know, high bar teacher training offering um, that might allow us to be a little bit um, more, um, free with being able to have that one aspect that 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 is the main aspect that Jen was a Jen was um touching on that before about having that high quality um teaching capacity 
which is essentially the backbone of our, our offering. That's why School of, School of Svadhyaya was, was uh, um, devised, because we wanted to increase that capacity to continue to give our students more. Um, so yes, uh, long-winded answer to your question is yes, I, I can see us being in Manchester. I think ultimately our first hurdle now is to really do what I wanted to, to really achieve, which was to really take over take over London. I have a, I have a little mantra, which is uh, the, the beating heart of energy and consciousness in London. And that's what I want. That's what I want more yoga to do. I want it to be that beating heart of energy and consciousness in us in a small place. London's a big place, but you can make it, you can make it, you can feel like it's, it's a connected place. And actually a hundred was my, was my first number out and I actually visualized we could do about 200 to 300 yoga studios in London. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's where, that's where I would like to be. But uh, mm. right now, the uh, uh, constraints against us. We'll have to see where the next 12 to 18 months uh, take us. But if, if we don't expand at, at, at X rate, we are, you know, we've got a great offering of what we've got right now. And I'm happy with that. Emma says, once I graduate, I'll be moving back north. Hence the question, <laughs> I'll manage the Manchester studio. <laughs> yeah, oh, look, we need, like, we need to have, you know, it will be from within. We'll have managers from within. So, Emma, keep in contact. We'll always, we always uh, hire from within. We're always looking through our network. We've got a videographer um, starting up with us uh, this week on Thursday. That's hired from within. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's what we, you know, people who who know who know us, who practice with us, who buy into us, um, can you know, they ultimately are going to be the biggest champions for us because we're doing the right thing. So um, likewise, with this fundraise coming up, I ho hopefully we're going to have a lot of interest in it because I think people buy into it. Um, so we, we'll wait and see and see what, we're going to send a survey out to see who's interested. So watch out for that email. When it comes around, gonna, I'm interested in investing 10,000. Absolutely. And I don't want anything back. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> next question in the box, and then I'll take from the floor. So next question in the box is from Tarrant. Great to hear your story, Shamir, and hope things will be great in the coming months and more strength. Please, would you revisit the CAP if we want to attend a class with available spaces during the day? I'm in North London. Thanks again. All the best. Yeah, so thank you for the question. Uh, that there, as I said before, it, was, uh, it has been you know you can tell from what I've been saying it's like the thing that I wake up in the morning and really have I really struggle with myself but the issue is um the issue with that is that yeah you're right if the class is empty not empty of the spaces you should be able to go into it but unfortunately there isn't a there just isn't a switch I can switch to say person a with such and such membership if x amount of minutes before a class a, a, a class is available then such and such can then go in for free that's something that you think that could be possible on a personal basis like if i had one studio by by all means you could just come down there'd be a person on reception they'll go look just just jump in but you juggle in that with 35 studios unfortunately it's just something that's that's unmanageable so uh, it's you know as I said it's something that is is a thing that is the price that we're paying right now um, for for you know, this position that we're all in and we've tried to make it better by having I think it's five pound drop-ins for anyone who goes over their their caps and I know that's not really an answer because again that goes against everything that I stand for and I mean you can see it in my voice it's like this whole thing is just a very massive inconvenience and there's really major sacrifices and this is um the you know this is our main aspects of our dna are being sacrificed here and there's people that understand um a lot and they're with us and i I'm, you understand um but there's people that also don't and they're like you know some people take it personally some people 
take it really personally. <laughs> We've had some people like literally <laughs> take it very personally, but it's just, it's a balancing act. And I've said it, I like to, I actually describe it as a high, a high wire act. It's a very, very, you know, it's a very difficult situation where at the moment our shortfall is about thousands of thousand, 500 pound a day is that's our shortfall. And uh, that was before lockdown. It's probably even more now. And, you know, the, we, we do have a buffer to absorb it, but it's like, when's it going to end? And we just don't know when it's going to end. And, and I'm positive for the future. I really believe it, it, there is a future. But if, there, if this was, to, if we would be, to, if we're going to be in the same position this time next year, I really, we would have to do a lot of equity fundraising and a lot of crowdfunding because we just don't have the capacity to be able to carry on. Because what we had as people who were paying monthlies six months ago who were supporting us, you know, they 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 dwindle because there's only so much people can afford for something that they're not really using that much. And, uh, well, you know, they may be using the online, but they may not be. They're definitely, if they're not using the online, then they're not going to, they've got, very, got a lot of motivation, especially after the months, roll past and people's circumstances change and stuff like that. It's a very difficult position to be in. So I'm sorry that we he can't says, be more accommodating. He says, that. I understand, fingers crossed, it will be okay soon. This too shall pass, smiley face. Okay, thank you. Thank you. you. So thank you. to the floor, you can unmute yourself and ask um, Shamir the question directly, should you like. We'll take a couple more. You happy for a couple more, Shamir? I'm I'm here till you until that your your guys can't carry on. <laughs> and you've won, you've won the prize for the most attendance, the most questions, the longest interview. Get in there. I was was hoping for that triple figures, but no, I'm just joking. I wasn't That's really. okay. <laughs> uh, Fuzzy Bear. There's one of those guys. One of the people listening is Fuzzy Bear. Um, Darren Descan, he he might he might have a question. I think that's a hint, Darren. I think you need to come off camera, come off mute, and ask a question. No pressure. <laughs> okay, I'm willing to take questions from anyone. Candid, hit me straight up. Okay, I just want to reiterate what I wrote earlier. Hi, Shami. My name is Valeria. Um, it's really lovely to, to be able to have this community because sometimes, you know, we run from studio to studio and we kind of miss, we are so many teachers as well and I'm not coming from kind of the within teacher training or, and I only started a year ago, um, but it's been an amazing journey. And I have to say it is the warmest, kindest, really stand up team uh, across, I mean, all the yoga studios out there. Um, I tend to cover every now and then for for other places but the warmth and yeah and it's just a quality of people it just really moved me and and that's one of the things that I was sharing with um, the students you know when we went back to to teach life um, so I really wanted to to say that um, and I think it reflects as well in in our students and the quality of people there as well and the people that join and yeah just really beautiful and my question really was, and maybe you, maybe you touched on this at the beginning. Sorry, I joined a little bit later. Um, in terms of what was the response for the online offering? Because I find a lot of the people that I've spoken to on the on pers in person classes in the studios, mm -hmm. they say that they maybe haven't practiced since March, or they they had slowed their practice because they they can they can't really connect with the. Uh, online offering so I was just wondering what was the experience from the inside so yeah I mean the online I think there's a big there's a mad scramble at the beginning for everyone to like move online we never had an online offering before um it's been a it's been a lot of people who who have thanked us for the online offering it's been a lot of people it's like we, we saved you know you saved our lives and I don't know what I'll do without more yoga and that's been really heartwarming. We, we, we share those messages around internally. There's quite a few of them. Um, I think I, I touched on it earlier. I think what trick we missed was not having enough Zoom classes uh, to have that connectivity. I think looking at a YouTube video, it only has so much gravitas when there's a chat box. And um, it's a, yeah, there's a chat box only. And the thing is with people is... How do you keep people engaged? And there's only so much, you know, a lot of people follow their yoga instructor 
and I think um, you know there's only so online's a difficult proposition essentially I think we had it priced up at, at quite a lot as well and um, it was you know ultimately our online offering was there to to give value add to the people that were still paying for us it was never really trying to get new people in so it's really and it's been a it's been a learning experience for us and that's took us all the way to this point of more yoga wellness tv where now we know we know our offer we know what sort of people we got in there we've got much better we've got much better um price proposition for people so we can go mass market and again it goes back to that bit where um you know what are you offering so we're going to go mind body soul and emotion and financial as an offering um and one thing that we have found is that this 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 environment is just it's massively massively competitive and there's a lot of people have been doing this already for a long time um so is that how do we offer something that's going to do pretty much a similar thing but with a few you know di different aspects um that can capture a mass market audience so we're working on that and the proof is yet to be seen so watch this space for 2021 um hopefully people buy into our holistic wellness offering that's much more than yoga that's, that's always been um a little soundbite that i've always wanted to say more than yoga um I get it <laughs> <laughs> More than more yoga. Okay. Cool. Thanks, thanks, Valeria, for the Thank comments you. before. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Darren says, sorry, no questions today. Fuzzy Bear, what's up? That's what's up. Any other questions from the floor? Otherwise, we'll let Shamir go off into the night and rest his vocal cord. Amanda, come on, hit me up. Yeah, there she is. Go for I don't, it. I don't have any questions. I never, I never think of the really clever questions. I'm it, also. It, it, does, just it doesn't gonna... have to be clever. It doesn't have to be clever. <laughs> just, just... Every week, it doesn't have to be clever. She comes every um, week practically. I, no, I'm just seconding what everybody said, which is that I feel like, um, I feel like that you've acted on things as well. Like I think that um, making this. Um, and Beck as well, I think I really noticed that you kind of notice things and you make them happen. And I think that's really exciting and interesting. And I think that's what makes more yoga, more yoga. So yeah, I'm just yeah. grateful, no questions. Um, yeah, thanks. Beautiful, thank you. Thanks for Hi. the message. Hi. 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 How sorry. are you, Jenny? How are you, Jenny? I'm good, thank you. I actually have a question for you. Go on. yeah, um, hit me up. Uh, I booked the course for the yoga uh, teacher training uh, starting January. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I book anyway because I, I want to do it for a personal reason more than become a, a real teacher. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, my only concern is about the actually online training, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask you, you know, how is going so far with the, the training that you start in September? Yeah, it's actually, I'm not, I'm not just saying this as a, as a uh, market inspirer, but it's actually going amazingly. People are really well engaged. There's been no, no dropouts as far as I've been told. Um, people, um, they're going to like breakout rooms. So people are in breakout rooms and they're going to little groups and they're bouncing ideas off each other. Um, we're, we're only, I think, I think we're halfway through, I think we just finished the second module, so people are halfway through. But we are, the whole idea about more yoga teacher training is to be more rigorous. And it's a bit of a, it was always to be more rigorous, but now it's online, it's a bit more difficult to be more rigorous because of the, because of the fact that you're not in front of people. But we want it, we want there to be standards that people are achieving. And we're doing that with final exams to make sure people are hitting those, hitting the, hitting the final exams. And if, if you're not going to hit it, then you're going to have to come back revisit maybe even rejoin the course again the, the 50 yeah. hour module to do to fill in the bits you, you haven't filled in also um something that we're committed to do is after you've qualified um we're gonna have um we have weekly uh teacher training classes 
So it's going to be for existing, it's going to have like senior teachers, teaching teachers, but also the new teachers and they can all come together. So you'd be practicing with new teachers and it will be a service that will be free and you turn up and you'll be, you'll be in a place with all just teachers and you're, you're in a class. And then after that, you'd be breaking out with a mentor or a teacher trainer teacher who will be running you through stuff that you should have picked up during a class and you can bounce ideas off each other, building that community aspect. No, it sounds good. It sounds good. I, I booked my place anyway, so, you know, I'll, cool. I'll, I'll, I think, I'll... I think, I think more yoga teacher training is the strongest proposition probably out there. I'm not just saying that because we have, because we have a teaching environment as well. So you can have, you can have uh, access to uh, karma, karma community classes to get, to get, um, experience up or you can come to the, the weekly drop-in classes where you're meeting other teachers and I, I think I'm just not sure where else does that and, and what all we're all we're trying to do and my motivation always is is just to build up the capacity of the yoga teacher training uh, um, overall um, capacity amongst everyone so it's it's going to be like it's a bit more difficult now because no one can actually get together but and we haven't even got one graduated group but in like the next 12 18 24 months we're going to have lots of graduated groups coming through and they're going to be able to go out and spread the word of more yoga and a lot of it is to understand about how to how to teach online and some of it is how to run a business and some of it is how to uh you know the the, the nuts and bolts of what it takes yeah. to be a good good teacher and it, the whole of the course has been built to to be uh, a solution for what we've have, what we have found when we're interviewing people as being the problems with the insufficiencies. If that's pardon me, if that's a wrong uh, adjective of people's abilities, I, to break that down, there's a lot of people who are trialing for to be a more yoga teacher who are just not getting in and they've done a 200 hour course. So what is it that is about the 200 hour course that is not getting you in? So that's why the course has been developed and the course actually, I don't know if you picked it up. It's not actually a 200 hour course. It's actually a 350 hour course. It's 200 plus 150. And the whole point of that is because of one, the 200 is not enough. You yes. need to have more, you need to have more practicals. You need to have the mentoring sessions. You need to have the business class. You need to have X, Y, Z in there. And that's why, as I said with uh, uh, Yvonne in the beginning, the marrying up with um, uh, Erica Shapiro, who's the uh, co-head uh, um, leader of the teacher training, she believed also the same thing. In fact, when because she, she's a yoga studio owner herself, when she was... Um, when she's looking at CV, she doesn't even bother entertaining anyone with a 200 hour qualification because of, because of the things that we found when we're interviewing our people in terms of the numbers that we get when we interview people for more yoga. It's a, it's a two and a half out of two, two and a half out of 10 people make it through the, the trial. So what is it about the, what they're learning that is not bringing them up to speed? So. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. That, that, that's, that's what more yoga teacher training is being born out of is that desire to try and bridge that gap and then, and then develop from that because the actual thing is actually, it's not 350. Actually, you, you haven't, you haven't been sold the full story. It's actually going to be a thousand or 1200 hours. It's going to be a full, it's going to be a full, but it's going to be the full, uh, you know, you're going to have every badge that was ever invented to, to stick on your yoga, on your yoga jumper. And you're yeah. going to be going, be going around there so enlightened you're going to be floating yeah i know that was difficult because i know that in the past the the yoga training was four years so i know now yeah. i don't know you know now it's different I, but it's no but you know as as things get commoditized and and people you know people uh, um turn it into businesses it gets shorter and shorter when i was a personal trainer it was like I did a personal training qualification and a massage therapy course for three months. And then, you know, four years later, you can do it distance learning in six weeks and you only have one, you only have one practical class. So it's like, what, what have you done? What have you done to, what have you done to the, the capacity in terms of the knowledge base or the practical base? It's been completely decimated. It's not saying that online is necessarily going to reduce the, the, um, the 
quality, you, you know, you still need to have the, the the experience of meeting people and being with people. But, you know, it's it's always better to be face to face, always. And yeah, but to, to, I mean, terrible. sorry, sorry, go on. No, no, you're right. No, but the, online, it's got there's lots of benefits of, of it, and it yeah. will it will help a lot more people. And the great thing about what we're doing is that it, the more people we bring on, the more people that we can that can go out there and espouse the word of more yoga. And it's not just about teaching in our yoga studios. It's about people understanding about access to well-being you know how can you be a pioneer for access to well-being how can you go to your local park and do a class for people for different de de you know so, so, uh, economic demographics or or whatever demographics that are just that that spreads the word of work the, the the word of well-being and that's essentially what we want people to be buying into there's no there's no way people are in my mind people who don't buy into more yoga teacher trainer become a teacher trainer to become rich because it's, no. you're, you're not that's just that, that it doesn't happen i mean it probably mm -hmm. happened probably happened in an old paradigm where the old paradigm was a lot of middle class rich people were practicing in in environments that had people that were totally devoid of being people that were part of normal segments of society where people are paying 20 pound, 25 pound drop-ins. That's just not normal. People, that's that's like the top 1%, that's top 5%. That's not that's not the many, that's the few. And what we've done is allowed the world to, to access the many and the many hopefully can go out there and and be the change that we, we all wanna see in the world. And that is unity. That's, that's strong mental, mental health, it's strong relationships. It's love, compassion, all virtuous aspects of our behavior. That's what we want to see, and that's it's a it's a brilliant it's a brilliant thing to be learning. And and actually, just digressing a little bit, I've joked to my senior team that I might become I might do the two hundred hour course and then the one fifty and get a thousand hours, and <laughs> and not and not expand anymore at all. I'm like I've seen the light. That's it. See you later. You lot are all, you lot are gone. I'm closing the studios. <laughs> okay. That, to would that be funny, Yvonne? Would that be funny I'm if I turned, to it. would that be funny if I became like 500, 500 hours qualified? I love it. Go for it. <laughs> oh, that is great what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jenny, for the question. Okay. Last couple of questions. I think Emma's got a follow-up question. Come on, Emma. Emma, come on. Let me see your face, Emma. Come on. Um, see, I told you. She sorry, got I'm sat here with bare face and in my PJs. Sorry. <laughs> Emma, 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 come on. What's the what, what's the one thing you've learned about more yoga? Come on, it's a no judge. It's a no judgment zone. There's one thing about more yoga. It's a it's a no judgment zone. That's one thing. Okay, that all... you ready? There you okay. go. Hi, Emma. Hi, Emma. There you go, Emma. There you go. No judgment got central. PJs, you've got me. That's it. Um, we are, Gosh, we are. where do I really want to start? To begin with, I just, um, as a student of more yoga, can I just say thank you very much to everyone in your yoga community for making it accessible, but also through lockdown. I self-isolated by myself and more yoga was really was my outreach for the online classes. Liz Joy, Mark, ben Mark Bennington doing his book club things like that actually made me feel so inclusive. So when the opportunity came up to be a yoga teacher, and obviously at the price point too, it was a no brainer for me because it's something I've been thinking about for the past couple of years and I've been practicing for about five years. So mm -hmm. it, it was just something that naturally came. And um, just to answer maybe Jenny's question, who is gonna do the course in January um it's absolutely fantastic and I feel very blessed that we've you know we've got Erica but also Lu Luana yeah. as well who has taught us and um, both of them are absolutely exceptional um everybody on the yoga team who are who are on the course we all feel quite emotional at the end of each uh, session because we're so involved in this together and that's a real special bond um so yeah, you mean we, we're starting another one at the first weekend of December, going into the third module. 
and that's quite intense but i'm really enjoying it so jenny um yeah you, you it's a, it's open up your heart open up your mind that's what i would say it's fantastic um hopefully i will qualify and be a teacher and i do actually uh, would love to be a representation of more yoga I've lived in London for 30 years. I want to come out of London now and I do want to kind of go back up north, but I'd love to be able to take that message up north because I don't think you, you'd have any problems translating that in a Manchester market because there's no one else doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so just, just just planting that seed there. Um, I'm with you, I'm with you. <laughs> but also, um, what I'm quite keen to know is what is the final exam? at the end of that 200 hour because nobody really knows we're all kind of examined we're all kind of doing tutorials at the end of each module so we've done the grounding earth we've just finished the water yes mm -hmm. we do assessments at the end of that but i really want to know what's going on at the end do we have a full one hour teaching assessment do you know yeah, I think it's meant to be a full one hour teaching assessment. We're going to have a person come in, uh, an extra teacher come in, and there's going to be two days of full assessments. Uh, and okay. yeah, it's okay. It's not, nothing to be worried about, except for your whole future life depends on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. no, it's So look, the, the whole point of the more yoga teacher training is not to get you to like the hour 199 and go, sorry, you failed. It's, yeah. it's meant to be... A, 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 a place for you if you don't if you don't make it for you to then bet better to go through the hurdles to come back better to be stronger and then go on to the next 150 to 350 to be even stronger and be even more resolute and ready to hit hit the studios or hit the uh the parks or your house or online or whatever it may be yeah in in confidence because in in most um educational environments whether it's personal training or yoga, most people won't actually be a practitioner. They all they want to be, but they won't be because just because the way the environment's set. So having yourself the most qualified, the most uh, rehearsed, or the most uh, the most you know having yourself put in through life situations, giving yourself having done the 350, giving yourself like real life situations and the men mentoring scheme and the the teacher trait the the teacher classes. That's all there built to get you to go from that 350 into a world where you're confident enough to be around teachers and have confidence in yourself. And, right. and, and you know what? Some people may be ready, ready like that at 200. Like every so often there's a person who's only 200 hour qualified, but they're 15 years in the game. Who, right. who has that? Who has that? And, and that's what we call the X factor. Something you can't put, you can't put your finger on it, but they have something that, that they have experience in there. So that that will be that will be assessed by okay. by people, and I'm not sure how many people out of 35 will have that. I think it's very few and far between. We get someone. It's not. It's normally people who have a lot of experience. Who I don't know. Mm. I'm not part of the onboarding experience, but every so often there's someone like Look, this one's done 200 hours. This person's done 200 hours, and they're amazing. But but, but a lot of time. Um, this is what more yoga is set to achieve, set out to achieve. As, as I said before, is trying to bridge that gap, to try and get people up to that speed, and and get you to spread that word. I mean, like going up north and like even doing your own thing, like going up north and opening the studio. It's like it, it does take some work, and you, I think for, it, it it takes work. I'm not not, yeah. not, 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 I'm not dissuading you, but anyone can do it. It's all about your motivations. What what is your motivations? But things you kind of talked about this evening about mm. um, maybe co-ownership or some kind of personal investment, that person can go up, you kind of venture, or that person can venture back, opening up that studio, but use your brand name and yep. some input there. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm kind of playing around with that idea at the moment. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, do you know what? The problem is, because I've, I've toyed around with a, a franchise model um, and... Yeah. I would, maybe I need to speak to some professional franchise people, because because the issue with more yoga is is that you just don't make that much, you just don't make that much money per studio. Yeah. I've already told you my numbers. Yeah. It's, it's around ten grand per studio. Some may be making fifteen, while mm -hmm. some are lose some are losing five. 
or mm. you know we've got we've got a few loss making studios that's just part and parcel of having so many studios oh we've got some studios in some really challenging areas as well places yeah. where they yeah but that's 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 our motivation our motivation is to be in places where people aren't used to yoga so we can get new people on board and change change the the fabric of london but um our problem is with that franchise model is there's just not that much money in it and yeah, yeah. you do t- you do 10,000 times 100 studios it's a million that's that sounds that's great it's a lot of money it sounds great but you do it on one studio it's very difficult because how can anyone make a living on 10 grand i mean you can live yeah. on 10 grand but not if you're not if you've got rent to pay it depends where you're living if you're living like me till 35 at your parents house and you start a business <laughs> at 20 years old and they're True. making you food and you get free free energy and you've got a push bike and you're well, hot wiring you know. I don't see myself making an early retirement being a yoga teacher, you know, mm. you know, I've come to that stage in my life where I want to do something completely different, but something that I'm really driven about, something I feel quite passionate about. Mm. Um, you know, like most yoga teachers, they have their own hustle going on outside of the yoga studio anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just kind of open to suggestion and thoughts, but I, I know I'm still very much a long way off. No, no, you, no point, Emma, don't, don't, don't think like that. You need, to, you need to think, you need to think about what you need to manifest, what you want to achieve. When I was doing my personal training course, I could see it. I was already training people when I was becoming a personal trainer. I was fresh out of personal training school when I was straight into that studio and I was t- churning over new clients. It's about having the vision of how you want to, mm. how, how you want to achieve that. I think True. It, it, the, the difference is in the studio uh, yoga envir- environment is, um, you know, you're at the you're at the uh, mercy of what's available out there, and you, you know sometimes you just have to be entrepreneurial and maybe think mm. outside the box a little bit, see what you can yep. start. Can you start a corporate? Can you start a thing in the park? Can you start a thing with their little local NHS group? Can you do a thing? At school, yeah. can you do thing with your yeah. friends? Yeah, what is it? Is it online? It may not be a studio. If you're up north and there's no studios, what are you going to do? You might have to open your your own studio. There's like so many different aspects of uh, yeah of, of thoughts. I've got uh, what, what, so many ideas right now. Good, really. so I, ideas are great, and you just need to work yeah. out. What, you know, and don't be scared to explore them. Um, I would I would say don't don't bank on studios because it's mm. there is it's you know you want to be in control of of uh, your your own destiny yeah. and I, it's not to say that we wouldn't love to have you in our studios we'd love to have you in our studios once you're qualified and and yeah. the, the people that are that are qualified to me say that you're qualified and you've got yeah. place and stuff like that that's that's the whole thing about what we're trying to set out to achieve and and but beyond that, we're just in London. What about you know? What about what about what about England? What about Europe? What about the world? So mm. there's you know there's lots of there's lots of things that we need to do as a community to as well as I do. I know someone I need to cure myself. I need to be the converted to be be the change that I want to see in the world. Mm. <laughs> we're all behind man- that. We're all here. And we're well behind that. You know. <laughs> yeah, and, you know. To me, I'm more just... yoga is just an absolute gift. It's an absolute gift. So you're doing the right thing, and you've got the most amazing teachers, honest and authentic. So, yeah, I've got my favourites, but all right. <laughs> but, who's, you know, your you're who's your favourites? Who's your favourites? Huh? Don't, don't, who's your favourites? Don't say Charlie <laughs> Kelly. Because that's a very, that's a very, very long queue. No, 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 no. But I, I won't. Accused, that that queue's that queue so long, you're going to have to be all the way down at the end of, like, the end, um, right at the end, round the block. Okay, I think it's time to take your final question, <laughs> Tamia. One Thanks, final guys. Question. Thank you. Thanks, have a good thanks. evening. Thanks, it's been a pleasure. Valeria, thanks, Yvonne. You're most welcome, Emma. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Bye. Emma. Thanks. Is that a question, Valera? Are you waving? Yeah, can I just one? You were mentioning um, when you were talking about the modules and doing the 200 and 150 hours and so on to get mm. 1500 hours sort of thing and get all the badges. What did you mean by that? Is it like the accreditations? Because yes. I'm wondering what's your view? Because I 
quite a few years ago, I put myself away from the British Wheel of Yoga and the Yoga Alliance because I really felt they were offering me nothing as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And for the work I was doing and the results I was having with my clients, I don't need it. So, and I do want to progress in a way with more yoga. I would love to get a lot more involved. I think I do have the experience to, um, to you know, to, to offer things to, to the community as well. And I'm just wondering, you know, what's your view and if me becoming part of that is, is, it has, is kind of a requisite. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's actually a prerequisite now. I think what we're doing, what we're looking to do is to have 350 hours as the minimum um, re uh, requisite to prerequisite for people to join on to us because we're, we're seeing too many people in 200 hours, not actually up to speed. So because what we had to do, we had to do the School of Svadhyaya as a as a response to the, the shortfall that was, we were seeing. So the whole point of the 350 is to be that. So depending on where you're at, maybe the 150 hour extra is the bit that takes you further forward. But beyond that, we want to have, so the 150 hours part of the more yoga flow, uh, the 350 hours part of the more yoga flow. So we've got, actually got our own, our, our own, uh, um, our, whole, our own personalized discipline called the more yoga flow. Um, but the, but it's built so that you do the more yoga flow at, at 200, but anyone who's coming from another 200 can then just join on for the extra 150. That doesn't have to have learned the 150, uh, the previous 200. But beyond that, that would be like more yoga teacher ready, 350. We're going to have another 150 to add to the more yoga flow, which is going to be a full 500 hour accreditation. And then there's going to be lots of like 50 hours that sit above it. So it's going to be like yin and restorative, yin advanced, level two. Advanced teacher training sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yin level two. And it'd be like special, it'd be like pregnancy and back care. And, uh, you know, there'd be all, all, lots of lots of other little di different bits. Um, and we've got Charlotte as well, who'll be coming on board to do teach um, some, of, some of her courses, 50 hour courses. Uh, two or three or maybe four courses and then we're looking at uh, other um, other like well, well known instructors or just instructors who um, who have things that can fit our model that people can buy into and our, our, essentially our, our end game or our, our philosophy is for people to be able to jump onto these 50 hour accreditations or 25 or 30 hour or whatever they're 100 hour accreditations but, but to be able to ac access them at an affordable price. And that's the whole thing, you know, we're doing, we're looking at doing 50 hours at 400 pounds. Normally the RRP is at like anywhere between 600 and 800, maybe up to a thousand. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, that's our commitment to be able to have that affordable, um, that affordable access to, to teachers so that they can further their uh, their their learning without having to feel like they're in a predicament in terms of income also actually hasn't been released the full ins and outs haven't been released to uh, the yoga community the more yoga teacher training community people who are teaching with us will get will get discounts for further qualifications and some people who are teaching a lot will get a lot of discounts and some people who are teaching a lot, a lot, <laughs> will have their teacher training done for free. So it's like you're basically rewarding the people who teach the most for you by giving them access to courses for free. So there'll be a sliding scale. Like if you're doing one class a, a month, you'll be get like 10% off. If you do two classes a month, you get 20% off. That's great. Yeah. Something like that. Actually, it's one class a week. You do one class a week. Yeah. Well, it's... it's, 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 it's it, yeah, TBC, TBC. But the point is, like, we want people who are working within more yoga and people who are coming on board, like Jenny, who's coming on board. Mm -hmm. Once they once they start teaching with us, if and when they start teaching with us, we, they want to be incentivized when they're teaching to uh, to have discounts on further education. And the and the best thing is, I forgot the caveat, is the the money that you've got to pay for your studies will be taken off the money you earn monthly. They'll be taken off your subs, so you don't actually have to pay for it. You do pay for it but you don't have to pay for it from your pocket. You pay for it for the time that you do teaching more yoga. So it's a way for you to uh, learn more without actually having to go into your bank account. And we just take it, we take a small proportion 
out of like six months or nine months, like 400 pounds paid at like 15 or 20 pound um, a month or a week or whatever it's yet, yet to be worked out. But that's my idea that it's a, it's a system where you're working with us, we reward you to educate yourself in a certain discount and you pay for it with the money that you're going to get paid anyway. Sounds great. No, it's really wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got yeah, the grant. I've, I've done. I've, I've got over a thousand hours already. Um, well, but it's great. But it's badge. great to. You got all the badges. It, <laughs> but it's great to do the the further education because there will be things yeah. that you know maybe pregnancy that I studied a long time ago is not. It's not mm. something I. Pr I do. I do have patients which are pregnant, but I've not taught pregnancy <laughs> yoga as much. Uh, so it's good to brush up and have all those tools uh, and some of the things that maybe I yeah, haven't yeah. really gone in depth. Um, and we're, also, we're, we're also going to have the uh, teach the teacher the teachers classes. We're going to start doing that weekly or definitely bi monthly. Where mm -hmm. we're gonna have, we have a location, everyone turns up. It'll be two three hours. We'll have a nine minute class breakout. All the people who are uh, from teacher training can carry on. All the people who are uh, already established can go off and have a coffee somewhere and stuff like that. And that's just building community. Mm. That's what it for us. What you do so well, Shimia. What you do so well. Okay, I think I think Sophia hasn't had Sophia hasn't said a question. Do you know who Sophia is? <laughs> I do think you know not Sophia, but I, I didn't get her name. Did, uh, does she look like Does she look like someone you recognise? She looked like somebody I recognise with the name Fran. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a really confusing week. It's, that's uh, my daughter seems to have taken every over everything in my house that's got to do with technology. So sometimes I'm sending an email from my phone, and then they're getting emails from her email address. Oh, yeah. Her, the primary email address. By mistake, or I don't know. But yeah, it confuses everyone. Sorry, my name's Fran, <laughs> and I, I do work for more yoga. And I do look a little bit like my brother, Smith. Yay, family connection. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure that's Brandon, not Sophia, but hey. She's one of my, she's one of my, I've got like, I've got, I've got to say I've got seven, seven brothers and three sisters, so. Wow. Yeah, really? She just doesn't know about any of the others. Okay. <laughs> so do you have a question, Fran? Uh... <laughs> Not, no, no, not really. I'm just very proud of the way more yoga's gone, the way they've adapted to the lockdowns. I mean, I work um, on the most depressing part. I work on collections. So okay. I have to deal with a lot of people that have failed payments or people that have been attending the studios over their cats allowance. So I've had to explain to them. And, you know, it's tremendous. that You've got such a wide variety of people's um, reaction to the cats. And some of the people are like, like, yeah, I totally understand why you've got to do that. And then on the other hand, you have got the disgruntled um, uh, members that are like, well, you know, what the classes I'm going to are not full. And, you know, like what Shamir mentioned, but like, like he said, we just don't have the technology to be able to deal mm. with that at the moment. Because, um, yeah, it's something that... You know, I think we've all tried to look into it, but we just haven't got the manpower. More yoga is, is although it's a quite a big business, we are quite a small team, and we do, you know, we we would love to be able to do that, but it's just not possible at the moment. No, but it's, it's a, a, a job. Of, it's a job of I've never really done yoga before, but before the lockdown, I was attending one or two times a week. I had a a few nice teachers that I really enjoyed and you Joaquin, know Joaquin Joaquin yeah and she loved, uh, she, loved she, she loved it Joaquin's amazing <laughs> yeah I used to like sitting at the front definitely Joaquin's amazing very spiritual love very it. good I love I love his voice and um yeah really nice and also I, I like Susanna who <laughs> which was quite nice as well so yeah well done Shams well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. I said, I mean, big it's shout out to my big shout out to my sister. She's uh, an amazing person. She's been there for me my whole life. She's uh, the backbone of, of the, the financial the, the financial component of the business. If there was no collections department, everyone would just be sieving sieving through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sieving through. 
Okay. Any quick final words of wisdom, Shamir, before you say farewell to your listeners? I think, I think, not actually knowing what I'm about to say right now, I'd, I'd like to, <laughs> what should I say? Um, so just to everyone, it's like, thanks for all the more yoga patrons for um, sticking with us, all the ones that are still paying and not using and all the ones that are just coming back and, and using. Thanks to everyone for, for, continuing and even though when there's a threat of the virus around you know sort of being staying with us and and managing the stuff to do with the cap stuff and that's just that's just a terrible terrible issue to do with numbers and what we can afford and and the likes and just to let everyone know is that you know as i re reiterated before we are in a position as of just to timestamp it for those people who are listening later, we are in what we're in almost December. We're in a position where we're not having to send an email around to say we're dying because we are, we do have X amount of months in us, probably a few, three or four months at, at this rate to be able to survive. We have a lot of hope for the future. We're investing in the future. We do see light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and we are working as hard as we can with all our provider, you know, all the aspects of the business, the students, the teachers, and and the landlords. Um, just, you know, we're just trying to keep our relationships as best as we can. And we're just hoping that everyone at this time can try and try and just appreciate that we you know we're a small team. We've got really. Uh, small profits relatively to per unit yeah it, it's you add it up it does add up but you know all those money is all that money is being invested back into the business to expand what the fundamentals of what we hope people are there to, to more yoga in the first place which is accessibility for all uh, affordability to you know yoga for everyone yoga for the many and not the few um that there's you know there's a lot of challenges for us and we 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 really are trying and my wife I didn't mention it she's a CFO and you know she has she has she's very worried in terms of she's a she's an accountant she sees numbers going down she gets very worried but I'm the entrepreneur and I've got, I've got big ideas so I'm like don't worry don't worry but you know there is there is a bit of wiggle room and it, I'm just saying there's like a lot of stress our side and it's a very very difficult position for us to be in and as i said to yvonne previously it's a high wire balancing act we you know we're trying to stave off the landlords from from taking all our money whilst trying to keep our clientele whilst trying to offer teachers as much work as we possibly can it's a very very difficult proposition for us to be in and a proposition that no one's ever had, had, had to live for no one's ever no one's ever planned for a pandemic. We're not. We're not insured for a pandemic. Hardly anyone is. Um, so on that, um, my outlook is positive, and it, it's since the vaccine information has come through, it's definitely even more positive. So all the people out there who are listening, teachers, patrons, uh, landlords as well, um, just please bear with us. And those who this relates to, please work with us. Um, please understand that we are um, we're just a small team of people who we're not from um, we're not from silver spoon backgrounds there's no VC capital involved in, in our business I'm just from a working class immigrant family <laughs> refugee family and I'm just trying to do something that is that is going to be good for the greatest amount of people and there's going to be some haters along the way and few and far between and we can navigate them they're not going to keep us down the reality is that more yoga is strong and the community is strong and our offering is strong and in the end of the day the the love and compassion and the connectivity that we have is what is going to allow us to really keep growing and and 2021, I hope, will be light in the tunnel, more, more yoga wellness TV. I think maybe more yoga retreats, uh, potentially in Cyprus, will be 2022. Um, 
but those are things that we're looking forward to and in, a, in right now it's short-term pain and as i said before we just need to work together and we just need to look out for each other anyone who's around us you know neighbors people who are non-yogic you know your neighbor the people, person you walk past at the bus stop and stuff like that just checking on people and making sure everyone's all right there's a lot of people who aren't all right at the moment and normally we can help each other you know through yoga and yoga therapy and doing holistic activities with each other we can't really do that at the moment so we can always be trying to do the best we can um and spread spread the word of love and compassion that's it that's my message it was quite a long one thank you so much amir seriously it's been a beautiful beautiful evening thank you for sharing your story so openly and so inspiringly thank you for all you do and we'll say good night here and it'll be up on the more yoga public website in a couple of days two and a half hours are you kidding me <laughs> You win the prize, hands down. <laughs> oh, sorry, by the way, guys, when I do that, it's because my back is wrecked. I need to start doing more yoga. Does anyone know a good yoga studio? On that note, we need to say farewell. Good night, everyone. Take Ciao. Care. Remember, if you want to get me, if you want to get me, it's Mr. Yoga in the Making on Instagram. Mr. Mr. Yoga, yoga in the Making. Making. It's a long journey, trust me. 2025. 20, Take care. Thanks, Yvonne. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad that I to share, share my story. Thank you, darling. You're very welcome. Proud to do it. Take care.